What's going on, Camcast? Cam here. Uh, got a fun episode for you. I was able to record this uh, this episode over Zoom with close personal friend Ethan Valtierra. Known Ethan for a long time, and you know he's my brother's best friend, one of my closest friends, basically like another little brother to me. And we we've, we've talked NBA draft, NBA free agency, NBA you know trades for years. You know, growing up, that's what we were doing. So I thought it'd be fun to get him on the podcast today and talk about everything that's going on with the NBA offseason in this very busy, very crazy, you know, crazy week with all the trades, the NBA draft, the NBA free agency. We had a lot to talk about, and I was able to, you know, like I said, record this entire podcast over Zoom. Uh, some of the audio again might be not up to Camcast standards, but uh, I hopefully I was able to make it as good as I can for you guys. Um, you know, as as always, you know, I, I'm glad you guys were able to join me today and join, you know, join the podcast and listen in. Uh, thanks for listening and enjoy, guys. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Camcast here. Uh, we're going to be talking NBA draft, NBA free agency, NBA trades, and there's a lot to talk about. Um, it's definitely more than, you know, one person that can handle right now. So I brought in one of my friends, one of my longtime friends, somebody I've known since you were like, what, six or seven years old? Somewhere seven around or eight, yeah. Long time. Yeah, it's been a long time you've known me. So I got Mr. Ethan Valtiera here. Ethan, thank you for joining me on Camcast, man. Appreciate you having me. It's, uh, you know, longtime listener. And uh, oh, yeah. I'm excited to join, <laughs> and uh, it I, should be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the love, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, we. I there are very few people that I've talked more basketball with than you. I mean, throughout you know the 20 years that I've known you, which is damn, it's a long time. I mean, we've talked <laughs> basketball. Is it 20 years? That can't be uh, right. We're 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 approaching it. I, I think oh no, we're fifth, we're we're eight. 15. Yeah, we're 15. 15 years. 15 years. That's a long time. I almost round I, up. I, I aged myself. That's pretty bad. Um, but not, I, you and I and, and our brothers have talked basketball for years and years, so I thought it'd be a lot of fun to bring you on and talk about, you know, a, uh, an NBA offseason right after the Lakers win a championship, which, by the way, let, let me get your, your initial reaction to the Lakers winning the championship. I need another more L.A. love here. So what, what do you got? What do you got? Well, it was a long 10 years. Oh, uh, yeah. The, oh, the yeah. last time they won, I was celebrating my birthday in Chicago uh, in a hotel room. I watched them win. Uh, but yeah, it was amazing. I I watched at a brewery. There was a bunch of people, bunch of Laker fans, and it was awesome. You know, seeing everybody celebrate, and uh, I, I rode the whole way home, blasting "I love LA." <laughs> and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a good feeling. And uh, I mean, between that and the Dodgers, you know, the chance. Oh, I know. Within uh, two weeks, right? Yeah, and it's been it's, it's been awesome. The city's been buzzing. I mean, I think the only thing that isn't right about it is the fact that uh, you know you, there's no parade yet. I mean, yeah. we'll get that eventually at some point. Hopefully it's not super tainted by the fact that, you know, we'll probably get it. We might get a parade after the season, you know, because, I, I mean, it doesn't look like we're going to get a you know, parade uh, anytime soon because the season starts in, you know, a month, mm -hmm. literally a month, you know, which is pretty crazy. You know, that it's, it's happening all at once. But uh, we're talking about probably one of my favorite parts of the NBA is the NBA offseason. I mean, you guys heard in last episode when I was talking about the NBA that, the NBA offseason is, 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 is like no other offseason, right? There's so much that happens. Um, there's so much that's going on. And it's just, it's really exciting uh, to see, you know, players switch teams, who's getting which money, which teams are making trades, which teams are, are you know, improving their team from the draft. And I think it's, it's just a lot of fun. So Yeah. Uh, real quick, if I add to that, this offseason is kind of interesting because there's not a lot of big name free agents. Yeah, I agree. It's not your, it's not your typical uh, offseason where, you know, you got like, that one key free agent that everybody's going after. Um, so well, there is, but we already know where he's signing. That's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, <laughs> there is, but we already know where he's signing. So we know that, but it's interesting because there's no know, drama. Teams, there's no teams drama. Still have mo yeah. Teams still have money to spend, but, yes. uh, and you know, they're going to spend it, but you know, it's kind of interesting to see how they do it and you know, where that money goes. So, Oh yeah, it's great. But before we get into any of that, we're going to go, we were originally going to cover the draft in a little bit more detail, um, but we're not going to do that. We're going to get, we're going to give you the lottery picks. Then we're going to give you some of our sleepers and some of our potential busts and then give you, you know, our thoughts on the draft as a whole. So we'll go ahead and start with that right now. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about number one pick Anthony Edwards. He was a, uh, you know, one and done freshman out of Alabama, got drafted by the Timberwolves. Um, Ethan, what are your thoughts on Anthony Edwards? You know, he's an interesting guy. Um, there was a report that came out that, uh, or his own quote where he said he didn't really, you know, watch much NBA basketball. He didn't really yeah. care to watch much of it. Uh, and a lot of people thought it would be uh, something that kind of tank his draft stock. 
and with you know the top three you know standout prospects between him James Wiseman and LaMelo uh, people might think you know maybe he'd go number two to to Golden State or he might fall to Charlotte but uh but yeah I mean incredible talent I think uh obviously there's a big gap between the top three picks and all and the rest of the draft in this draft. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And he's definitely, you know, he can go in either one of those three spots. Um, but I mean, uh, it, I, uh, it's an interesting pick because he's not a clear cut number one pick. And yeah. I feel like, you know, in, in a lot of drafts, there's always that clear cut number one guy that you just, Agreed. you have to take, you have to take like last year is Zion, you know, you can't yeah. pass up on a guy that, you know, is, talked about as you know the next big generational talent exactly exactly but uh it's interesting uh, especially because you know the the wolves have they have a very crowded uh, guard pool they have you know, d'angelo russell they just yep. traded for him they yep. just traded they have, for ricky rubio they yep, just they have Beasley. Signed, uh, they have Wancho. yep they and uh they even have josh akogi they have Jarrett culver they have those yeah. guys and i forgot uh, about a kogi that's a good point yeah, yeah a Kog- very athletic he's actually pretty underrated he's a great defender Great defender. He's uh, – I feel like he's – you know, he has. He still has time to improve on his offense. But, I mean, regardless of where he is in his career, that's not going to be what he's called upon to do. Is correct. To be a yeah, correct. Like that. So, uh, it's See, interesting because, uh, um, you know, at first I was thinking, oh, I mean, yeah, he's going to the Wolves and he's you know, number one pick. Um, where is he going to find the minutes? But I think that could kind of be to his benefit. Uh, you know, he's 19 years old. He's not going to be a guy who just comes in and takes over a franchise, obviously. I mean, there you have – two key pieces in the franchise and D'Angelo two and stars. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's good for him in the sense that he'll be able to uh, take some time and kind of figure him, his own game out, you know, maybe get 20 to 24 minutes a game, you know, season start. Um, and he's not, you know, there's not going to be a whole lot of weight on him as a number one pick. He's not going to be, ex- there's not a lot of, not a lot is going to be expected of him. So. See, I actually, I, I, I agree with everything you said. Um, I do, however, I think he's going to be thrown into the fire. I think they're going to start him at the small forward with Ricky Rubio coming over. My guess is D'Angelo is going to play the two. Ricky will play the one. And my guess is, you know, they'll want somebody like a Kogi as a six man off the bench. Um, I, I think I, what I heard was, and what I read was a lot of uh, NBA executives were glad that they didn't have the draft in the top three positions. Thought that this draft was so unstable that, you know, any pick you get in that lottery, there's a potential that it's going to be a bust. So why not draft later on in that first round, maybe find a gem and, you know, not, not waste your team's draft pick, which is what a lot of right. you know, teams are going to wind up doing in this draft. Cause there are a lot of really bad picks, a lot of yeah. picks that I thought I don't think are going to pan out. Um, yeah. Anthony Edwards, I think he has potential to pan out to be a good player, but then again, you, you have to consider, you know, somebody's ability to work. You don't get better in the NBA by not working. I mean, look at guys like Andrew Wiggins, all the you know, talent the in the world, pick, yeah. but exactly all the all the all the talent in the world, but doesn't want to work for it. Yeah. So I I but at the same time they had to make this pick. You know he was mm-hmm. the best available player in a pretty weak draft. Um, but which which leads me to the next one, who I think might be a you know a sure thing. You already know what this guy's going to be able to do in the NBA is James Wiseman, who was drafted number two to the Warriors. He seems like a more talented version of DeAndre uh, DeAndre Jordan, right? He's really big. He's tall. He seems to have a little bit of touch around the rim. Mm-hmm. Um, the only problem that I see for him in Golden State is the redundancy that the pick and roll has between you know what him and Draymond do. It's very similar. Yeah, Draymond isn't exactly a shooter like he, I guess he was with his backpack looking for him. You know, it's got the backpack <laughs> on, and I just, I, I just don't. I you know, I'm not a huge Draymond Green fan, but. Uh, I think there's a little bit of redundancies there, but I also think they needed a center and somebody to protect the rim. So I thought that was a good pick by them. I thought it was the right well, pick. Yeah, it's the right pick. Um, there, there's an interesting factor in now that, you know, obviously Clay tore his Achilles and uh, yeah, he's out for the new season. That, yeah, man, I, I, we got to hope. We got to send prayers to Clay Thompson. That yeah. One, dude. one uh, of my that favorite guy, players. I, I know he's one of yours too. Yeah, he's, he's just he's amazing. one of the best shooters the game will ever see. And aside from that, he's just a – He's a good dude. He genuinely loves playing basketball. Yeah. He just, you know, and he's brought so much, so, you know, so many classic moments in, in NBA history, you know, to us in the last almost decade that he's been in the league. Um, and, you know, Wiseman, he's, he's got great length. He's a freak athlete. He, yeah. He has, you know, he's going to be a monster on the boards, you know, regardless of where he lands. Yeah. Um, I think the thing for him and, that's really uh, interesting is yeah, he was coached by Penny Hardaway uh, in high school and college. So he has a you know an, an all star player former obviously player. Memphis I knew that but yeah 
that uh, he he you know he's got a former great you know all time player that has his back on that and says that he's a that he's a great player. So I think that really bodes well. I think the Warriors do their due diligence and they they're gonna you know vet these guys before they you know draft them. Obviously, they're a smart organization. They know yeah. what they're doing. And I like the the comparison you made of him to DeAndre. I think that's I think DeAndre is more of his uh, his ceiling, a uh, uh, more overall talented DeAndre. He's shown some flashes that he you know his shooting form is is decent you know he has a, yeah. a good base to work off of so he can maybe step out 15 18 feet yeah um, I would say right now the a more comparable player for him would be uh would be maybe like a Hassan Whiteside uh, yeah you know, I guess the guy that. who's I just think he's more mo- I think he's more over. mobile than Hassan though Hassan basically yeah. has the yeah, same mobility sure. of a of a three-legged dog <laughs> <laughs> And his, uh, I would say he doesn't have the the highest IQ among NBA players. <laughs> oh God, Hassan is he might be dumber than JaVale McGee. Like in all seriousness, he's there's up so there. many, so many old uh, Snapchat screenshots that float around of him yeah, that he, are just. He's not a smart guy. Did he didn't he you, say that Hawaii wasn't part of the United States or something like that? He said that? he was moving to Hawaii. He's done with the yeah. United States. Yeah, yeah that was him. Uh, crazy he guy. Signed a four year deal with the Heat. New congrat, four more years, Heat Nation. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, he. I think Wiseman will pair well with Steph on the pick and roll. Um, yeah, I think that'll work he's well. He's a big roll threat, big lob threat. So that'll give yes. Steph a little bit more breathing room. Off, oh, he's going to put up some time. highlight dunks for us yeah. this season. That's for sure. That'll be fun to watch. Oh, yeah. And it, it'll benefit Steph, too, because teams are going to be uh, – it'll they'll be more – I mean, they'll ben, it'll benefit both Steph and James because, you know, teams are going to be more hesitant to, to send a big out to switch on Steph. One, because who's guarding – Because he's guarding Steph. Curry, other than Kevin yeah, exactly. in the clutch in Game 7. Which makes no um, sense to this day. <laughs> to no, this day, no. my man Kevin Love put all of his defense. He hasn't played since. He's been injured since. <laughs> he, he used he used everything he had left in those knees, and he was done. Everything. Yeah, everything. He put it all on the line. We'll never see a better highlight from him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, man, my man Kevin I, Love. I, 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 overall, I'd give the grade a, the, the pick a grade of an A for the, the Warriors. I mean, I'll give that. I'm good yeah, with that. Uh, there, there's not much. There wasn't much else that they could do with that with that pick. Um, I mean, no, they they had to they had to pick, they had to pick Wiseman. Yeah, they had to pick yeah. Wiseman. Yeah, and um, so uh, which which, which, which yeah. leads us to our next option right here, number three pick. Um, somebody from SoCal, you know, grew up like you know twenty minutes from where we live. Lamelo Ball. I mean, you and my brother played Tell against boy. the Ball brothers, didn't you? I did not remember. I w- I was uh, held off of varsity that year. I'll talk to Dylan about that sometime later. Uh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I thought no. I thought it was. I thought it was. In, I thought it was in travel ball. I I never played against them in travel ball. No. Oh. Um, but uh, but yeah. I mean, saw them up close a bunch. But I mean, obviously, Lamelo comes from a very talented family of basketball players. Oh, yeah. uh, obviously, his brother Lonzo on the Pelicans. I'm still a big Lonzo fan. I think I always. Me will too. Be. It's he, he. That kid just knows the game, man. Lonzo just knows how to play basketball. Such a smart player. But yeah. I, and that, I mean, that's what I think gets lost in a lot of you know the stats nowadays. Lonzo yeah. knows how to play basketball. Yeah. And, but I, I, I like LaMelo a lot. Um, again, this is one of those situations where he, I'm not sure where he fits with the Hornets. Well, they're going to have to trade one of those point guards. That's, that's be, exactly be, what I was thinking. I, I'm because thinking, if you're drafting LaMelo to your team, what you're doing is you're basically giving him the keys to your car and you're saying right. drive the car with the rest of the team inside, you know? No, I don't think that trade his, will come. I don't think no. that trade will come right away. No, it's going to happen. It might to, be though. a mid season. What's probably going to wind up happening me. is I, I actually heard that today that uh, Terry Rozier might be getting traded to the Clippers. Oh, wow. Yeah, which they need a point guard. And, you know, I if I'm the Hornets, I hold on to Devontae Graham. He's a great shooter. So, and yeah. he came out of nowhere last year. I'd rather have him than – plus Terry Rozier's got $20 million in that contract. If you can unload that contract, maybe bring mm-hmm. back a big to the team, that'd be I think that'd be a really good help. Yeah. Then, you know, you have – you let LaMelo Ball create because I feel like that's going to be his best asset is his uh, – his innate ability to find the other players on his team. He is an incredible basketball player in on in the offensive end in every way possible for a guard. He's unreal, man. He's high IQ. He yeah. can make any pass he wants to. He sees things developing before they actually yep. happen. And he's been he in the public eye since he was 13 years old. Let's not That's forget, he, he played professional ball for two years already. You know, yeah. he's already played against people way older than him for two years. He played yeah. in that NBL, you know, the, the, the Australian Basketball League, which is a very competitive league. Mm-hmm. Say it's number three, I think, in the world behind the, uh, the, the, the Spanish League, which is a very competitive league as well. And actually, I, I jotted down the, his stats from uh, as a, I think he was 17 or 18 years old 
one in the NBL. His per 36 stats, 19.6 points, uh, just under eight assists, That's just solid. under uh, just under nine rebounds. He's a great mm-hmm. rebounding guard. He is because he's six seven, six eight. He's yeah. huge. He's a six seven guard. Oh, he's that kid I, grew like six inches in, in like three months. It feels like. Yeah, yeah. I think that just about a year. He think I think he grew like six seven. Crazy, inches. so crazy. Um, averages two steals, just under three turnovers. Now his shooting splits. 37.5 from the field, 25 from three, 72 from the line. Those got to improve. They, and I think they will. Uh, I think part of that was he was shooting at such a high volume because he's in the NBA. I mean, he's not, he's not playing a bunch uh, around a bunch of other NBA talent. Um, and I think he was just more out there trying to feel out his game, see where he, where he feels comfortable, where he needs to improve and things like and he was that. Trying to, he was, was trying to see what he could and couldn't do. I agree. Um. Mm-hmm. All right, so I have I have actually notes on all the rest of the because I don't think we need to really touch on the rest of the the lottery too much. Is there anyone in particular you want to talk talk about in the lottery, and then I can go back and do a quick synopsis on the guys in the lottery? There are two. Go okay, for I'm it. gonna okay. There are a couple picks I want to talk about, and I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, go for it. Oh, that's all right. Number four, Patrick Williams to the Bulls. I fucking hate that pick. That dude, okay, that's the one I really wanted to talk about. He's a sixth man. That was he. He averaged six points per game, right? As a six man coming off the bench on a Florida State team that was not a good Florida State team. I've seen I saw I watched him play. As you know, I'm a Tar Heels fan. Florida yeah. State was not very good this season. And they had two guys in this in this uh this lottery. I, I thought that was laughable. I don't understand it. No. Bad um, pick. I think it's just the Bulls doing their bullshit. They should have drafted Obi Toppin. That was their pick. Yeah. And I I'll get to Obi Toppin in a second, but yes. My, I I don't get the pick for a few reasons. One, he's a very one-dimensional player. You're going to get good defense out of him and not much else. And that's it. He, he can't he, shoot. He has no jump shot. He does not have a good jump shot. His, his, per four, I mean, his per 40 in 29 games this year wasn't bad, but it's very much what you would expect from a defensive-minded guy. 16.4 points per 40, 7.1 rebounds, less than two assists. Two steals, two blocks, and three turnovers. And per and per forty is basically the entire in the entirety of a college basketball yeah. game. Yeah, so that's not so great. I'm, you know, it's not great. No, and and that's what I, that's what I'm saying by like he he's the the. It's a reach. The, You're the, reaching. The, like it's the, like, like a tackle fall reach. Yeah, he's like the the exact definition of a one dimension player. He oh yeah he played. Play, don't get me wrong. He's a great defender, and I think that'll translate well in the NBA because he's he's got a big solid frame and, um, you know he he's seems. I just, dis- I d- if they were really going for a defender, though, they should have drafted the guy that went directly after Isaac Okoro. Isaac Okoro is a fantastic defender. I that watched him play guy, a couple yeah. a couple times this season. He had he played he played great defensively, and he was a number mm-hmm. six uh, number five pick by the Cavs. And I think that was a good pick by the Cavs. I mean, they didn't they don't really need a center. They got you know Andre Drummond. They got their two young point guards. You know Darius uh, Darius Garland and uh, who's that crazy kid? Colin Sexton. Colin Sexton, yeah, yeah, Colin Sexton, the one that's like, like his old, eyes are old. like always like yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that kid's that kid's a little nuts. I, so, yeah, they needed a guy like this. Yeah, Patrick Williams. I didn't understand. Um, Bad pick. I mean, hopefully it works out. I never. I'm never rooting for a young guy to fail, but I don't get it for him. Yeah, uh, it's a bad pick. Plus, he's on a team where he's just not gonna. He's not gonna be asked to score. So, what they should have yeah. done was they should have traded down, and they still could have gotten him probably at 11. You know. Yeah. Um, and, but, uh, yeah. And I mean, there's there's always value in a top five pick. So the oh, yeah. could have definitely got something for that. Well, plus um, they were trying to get off of Zach Levine's contract too, so they could have packaged those two things and gotten a real superstar over there. But you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm not a GM. I should be. I saw, yeah, I'd say he's more comfortable to like a <laughs> he's more comfortable <laughs> to a Lou Dort or uh, and you know he's got a ceiling. Yeah, I think his Lou, ceiling. Lou is Dort's nice good. though. Lou Dort's I like nice. Lou Dort. Yeah. You know, he had he had a what a 30 point game in Game Seven. That was a great game. That was random, a great game overall. Random career game ever. I agree. Uh, I mean, right, so we, I think he. He could become more of like an OG and an OB kind of guy. But, he could. Uh, I think that's what they, they compared him to, too. So we talked about Isaac Okoro a little bit. Then we'll talk a little bit about another uh, Chino Hills guy, Onyeka Okongwu. Now, uh, fun, fun his game little is tidbit interesting. about him. Fun Go little tidbit it. about him. Um, he is, I believe, the first alumni from the same travel ball program I played for, Edge. To make oh, he's, from, he's from Edge? He played with Edge. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know he played yeah. for Edge. Yeah. That's uh, crazy. I like him. I, I do like him. Uh, he seems like I a good kid, man. I liked does. him. I like. I, I I feel real bad for his story about his brother Namdi. Namdi, yeah. You know, I, I remember hearing about him. that years ago. That was a big deal around here for a little bit. For sure. Um, I like his game. I think he's he has potential to be a Bam out of bio type player. 
I just and don't know if I like it for the Hawks. Well, that's the interesting part of it. So I feel like the Hawks are kind of positioning themselves to move on from John Collins. I think so. Too. I read that too, which is Just a bad idea. John Collins is great. He's a fantastic player. He's great. Oh gosh. He's a great he's so fantasy talented. player. <laughs> I, I drafted he's him as rookie. Fantasy. No, I think I drafted him his second year, and yeah. it was one of the best I had him last year. I've ever made. Um, but, yeah, I think they're positioning themselves to move on from him just for the sole purpose that his, his payday is coming up. Yeah, it is. And I don't know if they're willing to pay him. You know, he's going to be worth a lot of money. Um, Plus, they have, Max, Capella and, they have Clint uh, Capella. They have Clint They have Trey Young. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I know you don't like Trey Young. I love Trey Young. I don't oh, appreciate man. the Trey Young slander. Dude, I don't think Trey Young's all that. Old man. head approach to it. Uh, hey, no, Trey Young is not all that, man. He's he's a Steph Curry wannabe. He Just, is a fantastic shooter. He is a great passer. And he's one step away from being Quinn Cook. All right. Um. Anyway. <laughs> There's K okay, like I, I just don't I it just there's nothing that's scary that's scary about Trey Young right he's not really uber quick he can't defend he's a great shooter I'll give him that I I might be the only person that's that's got hate for Trey Young but I'm gonna I've, I'm gonna I've heard I, I hear it a lot from I hear it a lot from uh, older NBA heads uh, bro I'm like four years older than you I'm not <laughs> that know. old I, that's what I'm saying you got the spirit of an old guy oh my god. <laughs> But yeah, um, I think I think the the Hawks are positioning themselves to get rid of John Collins, and this is kind of a step in that direction. Especially with yeah, I agree. They signed. Uh, <laughs> we'll get to that later, but though the the Gallo signing. Oh, the Gallo signing. Deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I mean, I think I said in the last episode that I, I thought he was going to get signed by the Heat because they tried to trade for him at the deadline. Um, it's a good pick for them, to be honest. Yeah. I, that's a good selection of of trying to sign uh, Daniel Gallinari, who's just a proven shooter in this league. You know. Yeah. That overhead shot, he's basically got one of those Dirk Nowitzki type shots where it's impossible to block. So. And he's just so fluid with his, his oh, game. Yeah. He's, can, he's, he's a, a great player, dude. He's a great but, player. Uh, but yeah, I, I like the pick for the Hawks. Uh, Onyeka is a very good defender. He can guard. I think he has potential to be a one through five kind of defender. I agree. I like and a Bam Adebayo a, type guy. Yeah. He's quick. And he, he's athletic. And he has uh, he has potential to, to grow offensively. And, and yeah, I, I like the pick I, for the I think Hawks. I think he's going to improve. He seems like one of those guys that wants to work. You know, yeah, he really does. For sure. Uh, for so sure. the next pick is number seven, Killian Hayes. I don't like the pick at all. Um, this is I a bad pick. I love Killian Hayes. Are you serious? I love Killian Hayes. Why? I love him. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. They well, they were. Okay, I'm gonna give you the pre the draft analysis that Jay Billis gave as they were showing the thing. They're like, okay, yeah, this kid's really skilled. You know, he's got a lot of great basketball IQ. He's like, but he's not very fast. He's not tall. He's not athletic. And I was like, okay, what well, then? What the hell is this kid good at? He has an incredible basketball IQ. That's what they were saying. I think he's one of, if not one of, then the best passer in the draft. Really? Uh, you watch you watch him play, uh, you know, his footage from Germany or, uh, you know, any France. other league that he was in. Yeah, yeah. France, I'm sorry. Um, he is an incredible passer. He's another guy who, who kind of like LaMelo, where he sees things developing where others might not. He can get the ball wherever he needs to if he's on a drive and he sees a man, you know, on the opposite corner and he's smothered by three, four defenders. He can find a way to get it to him. He's he's he is a sneaky, athletic kind of guy. Um, he has this kind of uh, uh, you know a little bit of an explosiveness around the rim, and I've been, I've kind of been following him for about two years now. Oh, you have? Okay, so yeah. you, so you're a Killian Hayes fan? Okay. I, I heard about him a while ago and I started following him and I. I, yeah, then, then you're the right person to talk to you about this because yeah. I had I had some negative points about him. So like, thank you for putting me in my place. You know, I wish oh. the kid good luck then. Well, no, his I dad mean, was a professional athlete, right? That I don't know about. I think he was. I didn't get to the dad part of the scouting report, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, and, all right. I'll, I'll well, listen to you on that one. Another part of his game that I like, in especially in the pick and roll, he has a very good mid range and floater game. Okay, and. To me, he has a yeah, <laughs> young Mamba. That's a, deep, that, that's a deep cut. Mamba Junior. Mamba yeah. Junior. Uh, he kind of reminds me right now. He kind of reminds me of a, a Goran Dragic type player. Okay, very, I can see uh, that. Very, very cerebral. Sa- very and very yeah, very savvy around the okay. rim. He knows what he can do and he knows what he can't. And I think he his his ceiling. You know, he's 19 years old. He has a. Do you think his time. ceiling is Rajon Rondo? I is think he that type of player. Is, I think his ceiling is Manu Ginobili type. type. Really? I'm okay, not saying so he will be Manu, but I'm saying that, uh, that kind of, you know, he's very crafty. He's a lefty, just like Manu. 
That's so he's like D'Angelo then. They were comparing him to D'Angelo too, right? Because D'Angelo's kind of crafty. Yeah, he's kind of like that, but without the D'Angelo range, D'Angelo's a Oh, yeah, D'Angelo's a better shooter. Uh, especially All right, Ohio. cool. Yeah, I but, didn't know that. So I, I love something him. There, I love right? him as a pick. I think he's got a lot of potential and, yeah, a good pick for the Pistons. Yeah, he's going to have a lot of weapons to throw it to with all those centers that they've been signing the last uh, <laughs> eight hours. So it leads us to number eight pick, a very interesting pick, um, Obi Toppin of the Knicks. He was the uh, consensus, you know, NCAA player of the year. Um, I really like this pick. This guy reminds me, and I think uh, Pre told me this. It, we're, we're, I was watching the first part with Pre. He reminds me of Jimmy Butler 2.0, where he's just going to work his ass off to be as good as he possibly can. And now he's getting coached by Jimmy Butler's original coach, Tom Thibodeau. So I yeah. think it's a perfect fit. And he's going to be in New York. He's from Brooklyn. You know, he's a hometown yeah. kid. His dad was actually a – part of the N1 mixtape tour you remember that was he yeah I did not was, know that that's really cool yeah was, that was part of the N1 mixtape tour I uh, I so like to pick two there. I'm surprised he uh, I'm surprised he made it to the to eight dude I know he's a great player he for, for a hard. draft that doesn't have a lot of depth I mean I know there's you no draft the sure thing they should have drafted the sure thing I feel I feel like especially with like Patrick Williams going four <laughs> still yeah. makes no sense he, he could have gone four or five I see the, the the contrast between the two players just because Obi Toppin's not a very good defender right now. Not yet. Yeah. He's he's not very aware on defense. He's not no. a good. He doesn't have good lateral movement on defense. No, he's he does by a lot. He does. Um, not a great shooter, but man, he plays hard. But he does have a lot of potential as a shooter. He's shown he that he can he can shoot off the dribble and yep. um, he has some range to him. And you know, there's always room to improve on things like that. Another thing I like about him, he's a four year player. He is a four. No, 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 no. He's not. He's two year or three. Two? Oh, he's two. Oh, yeah, no, he's no. Definitely... no. I'm sorry. I'm getting my notes mixed up. Yeah, he's definitely two-year player. Yeah. No, I'm think, I'm, I was getting ready to talk about uh, our, our undrafted fan favorite. Oh, that guy? Yeah. Seton, yeah. The Seton Hall guy's a, yeah. a four-year player. He's no, no, yeah. he's nice. Also, Top Cassius Winston is a four-year player. Okay, yeah, that's right. No, two-year player. But, but yeah, no, Top, I do Toppin, like was, Toppin was a good pick. Next pick is the Wizards pick, Denny Avidege, the, wizard, the, the Israeli guy. So I, I originally I didn't really buy the hype, and then I started showing the film. I like this kid, just based like off him. the film. I like him. Um, just like you, I wasn't very you know aware of who he was, and then I did yeah. watch some film of him. The I only like the film. I would say my biggest concern about him is I'm not sure where he fits in as or what his role is, what his role will be. Uh, he seems like a very, you know, he one He's thing like I noticed in the film forward, is right. Yeah, but he. Yeah. Uh, one thing I noticed, he's a very good cutter. He moves well off the ball, but that's not where his talent is. No, his talent is, is being in control of the ball and making yeah. things happen. I agree. And and John Wall's not going to relinquish that ball. Well, yeah. and Unless he gets I traded. Mean, some interesting news just came up about that on my notifications. Oh, just uh, now? He, apparently, John Wall just requested a trade. He does oh, not wow. want to play for Washington. Um, but I think the most uh, – Yeah, they did. Wow. The most, the most, uh, what's it? So uh, Russell Westbrook to the Wizards, then? That's the most yeah. possible suitor right now. Yeah, that's, that's the one what I was looking for from, possible from Sham Sharania. Yep. Actually, oh. no, this. Yeah, no, that was Shams. Yeah. And we apologize for the breaking news here on the pod, but I mean, the free agency news is really what you guys are wanting to listen to, anyways, right? Yeah. So we figure we would just, uh, you know, insert a lot of that shit into here because that's the stuff that we get excited about. While still giving you the draft coverage, so. Let's go. So we talked about Denny. We talked about, you know, maybe the fit more. Maybe it will work now if John Wall's gone. But if Russell Westbrook goes there, no one's touching the ball. Okay. Before we move on. <laughs> I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I Let's have some words for you about Russell Westbrook. Okay. I have time and time again listened to you disrespect Russell Westbrook on this here Camcast. All right. And I appreciate you letting me become part of the Cam fam. Yes, appreciate that. But I, I cannot allow the Russ Lander to continue. Hear me out. So you said Kevin Durant didn't want to play with him. Okay. I don't think that not, – I don't think – I know that's not the case because Kevin Durant said he didn't want to be the only scorer when he left Golden State. And okay. look at all the guys around him. Russell Westbrook is a very obvious scorer. He's won a scoring title. Mm-hmm. He can handle his own. But they had Serge Ibaka, who was only spotting up for threes at that point in his career. They had uh, Andre Roberson, a uh, known offensive juggernaut. Uh, and they had a uh, who's great whose greatest uh, accomplishment is dating had? Rachel oh, Demita from 2K Sports. <laughs> Shout out to him. Yep. Um, 
and uh, <laughs> Stephen Adams, who is uh, who who needs someone else to feed him the ball. So I don't think Kevin Durant left because of Westbrook. I think he left because another opportunity presented itself, and he realized uh, he wanted to play a beautiful brand of basketball in Golden State. Victor Oladipo is on record of saying that once he left to the Pacers, he owed his uh, newly found success to Russell Westbrook because he kind of showed him and showed him how to tap into his potential. Okay. Uh, you never hear. You wrote notes on this. Huh? Another, uh, an, I did not write notes on this. This is all the top of my head. I know my Russ facts. <laughs> oh, man. I, I, I will rebuttal. I will rebuttal. Um, and you'll never hear a former teammate of his say, say a bad thing about him. I, he's a historically great player. He's one of the, I would say, maybe in the top 10 to 15 point guards of all time. He has accomplished some amazing things. And I, I know some people like to disregard the triple-double as you know, stat hunting and stat, uh, stat padding. But that's really hard to do three years in a row. And, um, yeah, one year he had to deal with playoff P, uh, or this year we found out is pandemic P. Pandemic P. Pandemic Are we, P. Aren't you glad we didn't sign that idiot? Looking back on it, I'm so glad we didn't sign him. Yeah, we, I, I'm pretty sure Kawhi is wishing that he would have been a Laker. Yeah. That high, hindsight's always twenty twenty. As I've said before in the podcast, I'm, I know Riverside and Palmdale are no longer part of Southern California. They're going to have to form their own states. Well, Kawhi is very clear that it's Moreno Valley. Oh, then he's the Moreno Valley even better. Hey, Moreno Valley. I mean, more. Movell already has its own. They have their own issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so shout out to you, Movell. Um. So yes, I, right here, right now, I, Ethan Valtier, cannot allow the rust slander to continue here on the Camcast. I, I, I respect your position. Okay, I do. I, I respect all your words, but I will tell you right now, and I will look directly into the camera. The Russ slander will continue. It will always continue. If until that idiot stops pulling up for three when he can't shoot threes with his hitch of a shot, I'm always going to slander him. He might not be. He might be a good teammate to his teammates, but his type of game does not factor into team success. Right? He's he. You can, you can say like, hey, he was the only guy. But if you're the only guy, at a certain point, you have to realize what you are and are not good at. You have to realize you're not a good three-point shooter. I need to drive it to the rim. If he's driving to the rim and doing mid-range like he was on the Rockets last year, he's damn near unguardable. Ask Kyle Kuzma that, right? <laughs> he torched Kyle Kuzma. <laughs> Remember that game earlier in the year? I, I do. I do. He, he made... torched Kyle Kuzma. And it was, it was shortly after the game where Kuzma played pretty good defense on him in he the did. second half in Houston. He did. And then Russ just took it very personal. And, uh, Russ took it personal, like Michael Jordan did in all of the last dance. But, took it very personal. But I, you, you can't argue that Russell Westbrook is one of the greatest, you know, athletes we've ever seen. I don't like the fact that he just wants to yell at a bunch of kids. <laughs> okay. On, the Come memes on. of that are hilarious. Come on, man. But you also got to love that he is one of – he's a rare uh, – He's rare a rare breed. Of competitor, he's a rare breed. Competitor. And I know, and I, I respect him for the fact that he's a Kobe, you know, Kobe fanatic. He loves Kobe. He grew up watching Kobe like we did. I mean, he's from SoCal. You know, he's from, he's from LA. And Kobe has, in interviews, has said that, you know, of players in the league, you know, during the time that Kobe was playing still, of, uh, you know, when people would ask him, who in the league reminds you of yourself? He would often say Russ because of his, yep. you know, his tenacity, his competitive yep. spirit, and yep. how he just is always, you know, 100% all the yeah. time. See, I'm sure it'd be different if Russ played for the Lakers. Like, I'm sure I'd love Russ, right? Because of because he's a high flying dude. I know mm-hmm. that I would still get frustrated with his shot, his shot selection. That's always been my issue with Russell Westbrook is his shot selection. Even when KD was on the Thunder, he KD is one of the greatest scorers to ever walk the face of this earth, right? Like all time. You know, KD's KD. He's Kevin Durant. Westbrook really wanted to win games sometimes with his shooting prowess, which doesn't exist. And that's always been my problem. Yeah, so so okay, uh, so now I heard your piece. You heard mine. We're I, I we're good with the with the, the Russell uh, Westbrook podcast. Respect your position, not not respect, but I, I understand. Oh, you got to respect it. You got to respect this can cast, man. You can, you can lie about it. It's okay. Uh huh. You can lie about it. Yeah. All right, so let's continue with the draft. Okay. Um, I'm good with. I don't really need to talk about the rest of the lot. Um, I'll just mention real quick that the Suns drafted Jalen Smith, a center who looks like he's 45 years old. Have you seen the pictures of that dude? He looks like a combination of Steve Urkel and Carl Winslow. I have not. He's just a – he's a weird-looking dude. But anyways, well, they – you know, the, he, all power to him. Uh, <laughs> all right, so let's get into a couple of the sleepers in the draft. Who, who are some of your sleepers? Um, I like at number 21, Tyrese Maxey from Kentucky for the Sixers. Okay. Um, 
Now, when I originally picked this as a sleeper, free agency had not yet begun. Yes. And more recently in uh, free agent news, the Sixers re-signed Trey Burke to a – or no, no, I'm sorry, not the Sixers. I'm getting sidetracked. He once played for the Sixers, Trey Burke. He reminds me of Trey Burke on the offensive end, and that's why I like him for the Sixers. You know, people don't like Trey Burke. Trey Burke is a great player. I like Trey Burke I've always liked Trey Burke. Any team can use a Trey Burke. He's someone who can yep. come off the bench or if you know, you someone's injured can insert to the, into the starting lineup. Yep. He will get you points. Yep, he'll get you points. And I've that's always why been, Trey, been a Trey, uh, Trey Burke since, uh, since Michigan. Shout out to you, Tommy. Yep. Tommy! <laughs> uh, but that, that's why I like him for the Sixers. The Sixers, I feel like I've always missed that kind of spark off the bench. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I Shake Milton that. had a little run this year. But uh, he's not going to do that next year. He's not enough. He's not enough. Yeah, he's not. He's I not think, that guy. I think Tyrese is just. He's a very. He'll, he's going to score regardless of what he does. He's going to score. Oh yeah. Okay. I can, and, I can. His. You don't. You're not worried about his weak three point percentage on a team with Daryl Morey where they're going to prioritize three point shooting. I'm not. Because um, I actually have Tyrese as one of my busts. Him as a bust as at twenty one. At twenty, it's at twenty one. Yeah, because I think people draft a lot of those Kentucky players because they went to Kentucky. Right. Well, here's and they're, try, they're trying to get, they're they're trying to catch lightning in a in a barrel with like Tyler Hero and like those type of guys. I don't. Maxie's yeah. not that guy. I mean, I would get that if maybe he was a lottery pick. By the way, this is the first year, that. and I don't I know how that. long that a player from Kentucky, uh, Duke, North Carolina, weren't Duke, in, in North the Carolina. Yeah, nothing yeah. to the lottery. So that's what that, I'm not. That gonna tells you a lot about the draft. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it tells you a lot about those are the um, blue blood schools, you know. Yeah, and you know. You know, throw in uh, what is it, UCLA and yeah, um, and Kansas, Kansas. Those are like the you know maybe the top six so going, programs of all time. And so going into that, my my biggest sleeper on the board is Cole Anthony, number fifteen in the Magic. I like that one. Okay. I obviously you know Tar Heels blood runs real deep in my. It's the one team you know me, my brother, and stepdad Kevin all agree on. Um, I love my Tar Heels, but Cole Anthony is different, dude. Cole Anthony is better than more than half the players I got drafted ahead of him. He's That's a just very a fact. Good player. I like him. He's a, he reminds me of Derrick Rose. He reminds me a lot of like prime Derrick Rose. He's I got some of that. Fall that to 15. I, it's because he had a bad season. Yeah. He I had, mean, so he, he tore his meniscus. The, he had mono. He missed a lot of time. That's the thing about, about this, se- uh, this season for college basketball. It was cut short. We didn't see a lot of the guys who take yeah. that, that star turn in the tournament. I know. Um, shout out Big Rona. But shout yeah. out Rona. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, yeah, good pick at a great spot in the in the draft. You know, yeah. I, not a lot. Needed a pick. point guard. Yeah. yeah, and then I I got a couple more sleepers. I got a uh, precious Achiuwe from Memphis to the Heat because I just feel like anyone that he drafts is going to be good, and he's an athletic guy. Pat Riley, they're really genius. good at drafting. The Heat are Pat great. Riley's they're a great a organization. Genius. I've I've yeah. spoke. You know, you've heard me. I've spoke the Heat's praises on the podcast. They're mm-hmm. a great team. They draft really well. They find these guys. So I'm, my assumption is precious is going to be great. Another sleeper I have is uh, R.J. Hampton, the one that the Nuggets traded for. Yep. That's gonna he's gonna be a great player. And the Nuggets are another one of those teams that just finds these guys. And the interesting part about that pick is Monty Morris is gonna his this is the contract here for him. Oh, he's about to get paid, and he's gonna get paid. He's a yeah. very good backup point guard. Monty he can Morris even start. Is great. He could start on most teams. Yeah, he's a lot great. of teams don't have a point guard that talented who can shoot like he does, and and command and, uh, an offense like he does. He's a great exactly. player. Yeah. He was a four year starter at Iowa State, I believe. Yeah. And I, I believe I, he was because him and Kuz are best friends. They are. Yeah. They're uh yeah. Flint. They, uh, Flint Stones, yeah. I I like the pick for them. He's he's gonna have a year to develop under them. Yep. And you know, he won't need to play right away. In the league. Yep. Nope. And I think long term it's the right pick for them. I like it. And then another uh sleeper I have, this is a very obvious sleeper. Number forty one in the second round, Trey Jones to the Spurs. Trey Jones. That's a steal. Yep. Trey Jones uh, can play some basketball, dude. Shout out uh, Tyus Jones. Is, Tyus he, still Jones the, is also, he still in the Grizzlies? He's, he's still in the Grizzlies. He That's just hasn't got a run. Tyus Jones, also a great player. I think Trey's better. Trey's more athletic. Yeah. He's a little bigger. He's a better point guard. But, I mean, Trey Jones is a great player. To get him in the second round like that, I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I like the pick. Now, a pick – or not a pick. Someone who wasn't picked. An okay. undrafted free agent. Miles Powell from Seton Hall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That, he, absolute, he's gonna get he's gonna get buckets. Absolute bucket. He yeah. is an absolute bucket. He's not. I don't know why he didn't. You know, he's a four year guy. 
uh, don't know why he wasn't drafted. So many guys who were drafted who, you know, easily. I think it's because undrafted. he's a four-year guy, in all honesty. I think and that NBA, NBA teams don't want to waste a pick on that anymore, which I think is blasphemy. I don't like that. I don't like that, that kind of new um, way of drafting now in the NBA. You know, they draft for, on, based off of, you know, what you think that a guy can do. Like, so then you wind up drafting a guy like Scal Abizier, who's just complete ass. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> don't don't too much put it. Don't put don't put too much hate on Scal. By the way, this is brought to you by Don Julio unofficially, <laughs> and it's starting to get to me a little bit. There it um, is. I can tell. So Let's if, do it. If you hear me slur my words, that's why. I don't um, but yeah, I mean, this dude is an insane scoring point guard. He is only oh, six Trey two, Jones but is great. He has a, a six seven wingspan at six two. He can create space against anybody he's matching up against. And if he can't get that much, you know, space on the floor, he has a high release with his long wingspan that he can shoot over practically anybody who's on him. Mm-hmm. Um, you got signed by the he, Knicks, right? Yes, he did. Yeah, the Knicks got a So between one. between Obi Toppin and uh, and <laughs> and Miles Powell, they got a they, yeah, they a got draft. a couple good they got a couple good young players. All right, let's go into the busts. I only got a couple busts. I don't want to go too much in the bus, but I for my first bus, I got Anthony Edwards. I think he's gonna be a bust. Um, I think he's going to wind up being a 12 to 14 point per game scorer, you know, maybe be defen- decent on defense. I just don't think he's going to want to get better. Like he's not going to put in the time that it takes to get better. I know we talked about that earlier, but that's just how I really feel about him. I, I get, th- I get why, you know, as a number one pick, you can label them as a bust, but I think in this draft, it's kind of hard to label it's tough. the number one pick as a bust. He, he could become, you know, for he, all could. Know, he could become a very solid rotational player uh, and a key contributor to a good team in the future. Yeah, um, no, it's true. Maybe so, and maybe and it, maybe it's unfair to label anyone as a bust in this draft simply because there just isn't enough data. There's a potential all these guys wind up being busts. I'm gonna label one bust just because of the 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 number he was drafted at, and that's Patrick Williams. Oh yeah, you know he's a bust. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll take that one. He is a bust. Uh, I I hate that pick so much. There, it doesn't make any sense. He's it's more so played, me wanting the the Bulls to fail because they are such a poorly managed organization. And Jerry Reinsdorf. I need <laughs> Jerry Reinsdorf. I need them to get a kick in the pants to Man. really get things together. Cause I know. So what, what's your, what's your key? So I'll, I'll be my key to take, uh, take away from the draft first. I think this is one of the weakest drafts we've ever seen. And I think a lot of it has to do with this, right? We had the coronavirus, which shut down March madness in March. Typically mm-hmm. in that March madness, some players are going to rise to the top. It happens you get, every single you get year. Your, your, Kemba your, Walker. That's where we. That's where we found Kemba Walker from. Was from the NCAA. Cardiac game. Kemba. Yeah. Cardiac Kemba. Not the not the not the draft. The tournament. The NCAA the tournament. Yeah, tournament. When when he did that step back in in the ACC uh, in the Big East championship game over that center from Pittsburgh, it's iconic. You know, he still does it to this day. One of my favorite parts of that 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 game. Also, winner, Shabazz Napier. Shab- yes. That's another guy <laughs> who, who LeBron lobbied for the Heat to to draft yeah. him and, and then left, left right immediately after. Yeah. Uh, but from the Ken, the the Kemba step back game winner, I love how his coach was just celebrating with no emotion on his face, and then immediately just stopped to shake the other coach's hand. I know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's a big part of you know this draft is that we did not get the tournament, and a lot of players take that kind of star turn and make themselves clear cut lottery picks. Yep. Uh, and you know maybe we could have found out who from the the picks was uh, you know the clear cut number one guy. And yeah. that might not have been Anthony Edwards because he might not have even made the tournament. At that's, Georgia. That's, no, he, they, they weren't going to make it. See, yeah. that's, that's why with the, NCAA, uh, with the NCAA, I have a lot of issues with it, but there is also a lot of good that it does. Obviously, I, I mean, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like the players should get some compensation, at least for their likeness. Yes. Yeah, they should be able to – I feel like they deserve some money for that. <clears throat> yeah, they're getting a free education, but they're generating, like, lots of money for the school. I'm very right? big on, on, paying, on paying the athletes in the NCAA. I think, I, think uh, they should be, I think they should be getting paid. I don't think an education is enough for what they generate. No one in the top 14 picks, no one in the lottery is going to that college to get an education. They're going no. there to, they're going to there play there basketball. To play. And to launch themselves into the NBA. Exactly. And they should be compensated exactly. as such because they generate so much money for the that, or they, they should at least be able to use their likeness to advertise for companies in the area, you know, and get paid that way. But they're not yeah. even allowed to do that. But anyways, that's you know, saying that that's my problem with the NCAA. But at the same time, there are positives with the NCAA, and that's like the tournament where these these players that you know might be at a small school, like you know, when Lehigh beat Duke, and you know who was on that Lehigh team was CJ McCollum. CJ McCollum, yep. It's, you know, that's how these guys get a name for themselves is being in this tournament. So that's, that's the good of the NCAA 
is the fact exactly. that they do put on this tournament, but they, they need to be able to reach a, an avenue where everybody, you know, prospers from it. So I think that's really important. Uh, yeah. You got any final draft news, any, any uh, draft takeaways or anything like that before we move forward? Um, I mean, yeah, um, overall weak draft. Um, yeah. I would say the two player, or the three players I'm most intrigued by is James Wiseman and Golden State. I think he could help them a lot. Um, yeah. He adds an interesting dynamic to their offense. And even though yep. their defense, uh, especially, uh, it's kind of interesting with Marquise Chris. He had a, a pretty solid year, actually, last year. It's interesting to see how he'll, uh, how he'll fit in with the team next year with Wiseman on the, on the roster yep. now. Yep. Um, LaMelo, I think he's going to be a, a really good NBA player. I really hope I mean, the best for him, man. Yeah. And I, I, you it's know, something about those you know, people that come from this area. You want this area to be repped real good. You're just you know rooting I mean? for him. I know. You're just rooting for him. I know. It's, it's, and, it's how it's and, always uh, been. And I, I'm so excited for Killian Hayes. If he ends up being a bust, then oh well. Then I had him on my bust list, but I didn't sit, talk about it because I didn't want to uh, disrespect your take. I hope he's. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. I mean, I hope I just based off the film. I wasn't impressed by the film, but I'll have yeah. to. What I'll have to. We'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. So that's that was our draft talk. Uh, we're going to take a quick break because I need to go get some crown before we continue the rest of this. So I'll go ahead and we'll be right back. All right. And we are back. Sorry, I had to fill up on some whiskey because the first half was all coffee to wake me up from my nap. And now I have to have some whiskey to talk about some of the craziness that's been going on in the trade market in the NBA and the free agency market. So either we're going to power through some trades right now that have already happened this week and one trade that did but didn't happen because I think that's really fun to talk about. You already know what I'm talking about. I already know. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just start with the first one. Um, this is just the first one on my list, not necessarily the first one overall. I got, you know, the Sixers, they were able to acquire Seth Curry for Josh Richardson and a draft pick, which wound up being the 36 overall Tyler Bay. Did you like that trade for the Sixers? I love it for the Sixers. Um, I think so too. It's a great trade. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the Sixers just because, I don't know, I don't care for them that much. Um, but is it the Embiid? Trade, no, I like Embiid. I've I've come around on him. At first, I was kind of, eh, but now I've come. Is it because Ben him. Simmons is still a super rookie, or what? It's because Ben Simmons won't shoot the goddamn ball, and he, he won't has, shoot. He's so good, and if he oh just shot God. the fucking ball, he'd be so he's, good. He is an amazing player. That I don't think he's that people amazing. talk about him. He is such a good defender. He plays. After watching some of the playoff games this year, he plays hard on every possession. Like yeah. every possession, he's in there, but he won't shoot the ball, so it's easy to defend him. That's the only thing missing from his game. But aside from that, one glaring issue that Sixers always have is lack of shooting yep. and guys who can kind of get their own shot from the perimeter. Yep. They tried to make that move this year by getting Alec Burks when he was, uh, you know, they traded him from the Warriors. and They were they three got, years too late. Yep. And Alec uh, Burks was nice in the Jazz. He was very good. He, he was, was very nice good. In the jazz. And in, even now, he's kind of coming into his own again and after his his injury and but, yeah, Seth Curry is a fantastic shooter. He's one of the best shooters in the league, obviously, from the Curry bloodline. Yep. And yep. it didn't cost much to get him. Also, and his his father-in-law is now his coach. So, I think that's kind of interesting, too. Yeah. Um, I forgot about that whole dynamic of it. <laughs> but it's yeah. weird. The, the, the Rivers and the Currys are very intertwined. Yeah. And Paul but, George. Uh, um, and Paul George. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I, I think the, the trade is – you know, perfect for the Sixers. And yeah. They they definitely got what they needed, and yeah, I like it. I think it worked. Well, I think it works for the Mavs too. Josh Richardson is a great on ball defender, which is something the Mavs really need. So I think it works out for everyone. That's Josh Richardson's interesting because when he was on the Heat, I feel like his role was kind of overblown. He was asked to do too much because they didn't have much. Exactly. And then he he moved to the Sixers, and then he was kind of underutilized. And yeah, you you see what he can do, but he's a solid player. He, I like Josh Richardson. He's a very good player. Uh, yeah. Good defender. Capable shooter, capable yep. offensive player overall. Yep. yep. I don't, don't uh, think the 76ers know what to do with their yeah. player. So the next trade, it's kind of an interesting trade. It's not a big trade, but I wanted to shoot out this trade just because it's it's a it's a trade I think Tommy's going to be happy about. Um, Luke Kennard is finally off the Pistons, and he's on the Clippers now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I have some feelings about this. Luke Kennard was – he was pretty good towards the tail end of last year. I am he not was... impressed by anything. Okay, who would you rather have, Luke Kennard or Landry Shamit? I don't like Landry Shamit. I don't like him either, but I really don't like I think, Luke Kennard. I think there's this. Everyone loses in this trade. Well, my thing except is for Bruce, he, except for the Nets got Bruce Brown. I think I like Bruce Brown. He's a very good defending point guard. I like I like, I like Bruce he's Brown. He's very good. And I the like Nets him. Got him. But I think Luke Kennard was kind of coming into his own. He was finally finding his rhythm. I mean, he's not going to be. He's never going to be like a you know 
like a, some standout player on whatever team he's on. He needs to shoot he, to be a Joe Ingles type guy. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Joe Ingles is unique in the fact that he's he's better than most at, at making plays. At, he is. At his position. Which is weird. At his, with his build, it's interesting. I know. He's an, um, <laughs> he's, he's an amazing player. He's just all yeah. skill. Yeah. Um, yeah, Landry Shamit. not impressed by him. I never have been. He's, you know, all he – all he really brings is shooting. But yeah. Once you once you kind of take that away from him and he goes on a cold streak, he's not a good ball handler. No, he's not. He gets picked on on defense. Yeah, he's the worst he Wichita State shit. player to come to the NBA. I still like Ron Baker way more than Landry Shaman. <laughs> I, I, I will go to bat for Ron Baker every single day. Nick's that dude could legend. Play. And then obviously, you know, FVV. Fred Van Vliet yeah. is nasty. So, anyways, that trade's that trade. So, I don't want to go too much in that trade. Next big trade is uh, – let me get my pen out here. Let me make sure we're crossing this shit off. Um, Kelly, you're to the Warriors for a protected first-round pick. I like it. Um, the interesting one about this again. is they are – the Warriors are going to be eating $80 million in cap space with low yeah. tax. I mean, I think they're just willing to pay it at this point just because they don't have much going for them right now. I agree. Especially with I, I with like Kelly going down. Kelly Uber is a good player. Oh, I love Kelly Uber. He's a he's a great player. He had like I think this last year was his breakout year. He oh, was yeah. finally able to kind of you know show what he's capable mm-hmm. of. He's very explosive around the rim, a very capable shooter. Yep. Uh, plays with a lot of energy. I like him. He, he he plays angry, which I like. I always I always say that I like when a player plays with like a lot of fire. You yeah, know, it means that they really give a shit about what they're doing. You know, so I'm I'm always really into that because that's I mean that's how I kind of played was I always played angry. And you got to kind of play a little bit like that. I just I angry I, on your way to single digit wins. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I feel that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> uh, it's all right there, black hole. No big deal. But uh, <laughs> but uh, no, nah, it's uh, I like the pick. I like the uh, the pickup for the Warriors. That <laughs> was pretty good. You're stupid, dude. <laughs> uh, uh, nah, yeah, that's true. I think the next trade I really want to talk about for a few reasons is the the Bucks trading for Drew Holiday. Okay, I'm cool with that. What do you think oh, they gave up too much or too little? They gave up way too much, but at face, so much. at face value, I love it. Shout out Drew Holiday came to, you know, came to our high school when uh, I was a yeah, junior. You guys his friends his cousin, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, shout out cool. James Wilson, Jay Willie. You know, hope you're doing good. Uh congrats on the engagement. But yeah, um Mazel tov. Ma- <laughs> Um, he is an un- unbelievably talented defender. Oh, Drew Holiday is underrated, man. I speak Drew Holiday. He's one of the most time. underrated defenders, or not defenders, players in the NBA. For sure, he could be an All Star every single year. He's just not. Can, yeah, can score any level. Yep, on the court. Can guard um, guard one through four. Yep, and because he, he's super strong. He's what the Bucks need needed after they let Malcolm Brogdon Brogdon walk. Um, they shouldn't have let Malcolm Brogdon go. That was, one that of was the worst decision they made. made. Yeah, Brogdon's great. Just for the sole purpose that Brogdon's one of those guys who can kind of get his own shot when he needs to. Yep, and, and he, he was one missing. of those. He, he's one of the few people that's gone 40, 50, 90. You know, forty yeah. percent from three, fifty percent field goals, ninety percent three pointers. That's a very or ninety percent free throws. That's a very short list. It's like him, KD, Steph Curry, uh, Bird. I think Steve Nash, Larry Bird. It's a very short list. Max, uh, Mark Price, I think, is on that list too. For all you old Cavs heads, uh, but yeah, I, the 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 thing I'm just gonna read from my phone here, just because I didn't jot down too many notes on this. But um, New Orleans, or I'm sorry, Milwaukee gave up a 2020 first round pick, so they've already used that. A, the rights to a 2024 pick swap, an unprotected first round pick in 2025, yep. the right to a pick swap in 2026, and a first round unprotected in 2027. And mind you, Drew is on a on an expiring contract this year. So I don't like the pit. I don't I don't like the trade. I think they gave up a lot. They gave up Eric Bledsoe. They gave up George Hill. Well, I don't like the pick for the Pelicans either. They have so many young guys and they have so many point guards on that team. I don't know why they would need Eric Bledsoe. Well, Eric Bledsoe is interesting just because he's kind of regressed in uh, you know behind what I thought he would. He's be, he's what, he what you be. want. Uh, Drew Holiday is what you want Eric Bledsoe to be. Exactly. Even though somehow Eric Bledsoe was on an all-defensive team this year, which makes no sense. I don't know how he got on that. 
Yeah. Drew Holiday. I, I believe Drew Holiday should have taken his spot on one of the much whatever deserved, he was. Much more deserving of it. Yeah. I think I, I think I talked about that on one of my episodes. I just I just love Drew Holiday as a player. So I mean, obviously, in my opinion, Drew Holiday, you're getting more value than you are for Eric Bud. So just overall, he's a better team player, better defender, better scorer, better passer, better rebounder, all around better. I just think that if you're the Bucks and you're not even sure if Giannis is going to come back next season, you know, in free agency you're kind of leveraging your future in hopes that maybe you can win a championship this season, which we know they're not going to do. And that's so I think it's a bad, yeah. it's a bad, it's a bad move. We already know who's going to win the championship this year. It's going to be the Lakers, but um, back to back, <laughs> but the Bucks are in, obviously they've, they've been in win now mode for the last couple of years. <laughs> there goes the heck thing. <laughs> uh, the Bucks, they've been in win now mode for, for, you know, for a good amount of time now. And obviously with, with Giannis's lingering free agency, um, He's all he's going to be eligible for the supermax. He has. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. And I think something got, that people aren't talking about is the coach, right? Budenholzer Budenholzer is an amazing coach in the regular season. You know, he was the coach of the Hawks when they had Paul Millsap, yeah. Al Horford, and they, they were what, great in the regular season. That year? They, had, they think they had four All Stars. It was Corbett, yeah. uh Millsap, and Horford. Right? Yeah. They were the number one seed, and then they just got steamrolled in the playoffs by LeBron. Well, I mean, Buden to the east. To the east. Everybody did. Buden, yeah, no. The east is just a joke. Still is a joke. Budenholzer is not a good playoff coach, and he has never been, right? I mean, his track record is he gets them, he gets one of the top teams in the regular season, and mm-hmm. then he can't do anything with that team in the playoffs. It's it's proven time and time again. If I'm the Bucks, I change the coaching altogether. I got a new yeah. coach. That's what but I, I would have done that this offseason. At least one more time about before him, Giannis goes away. What's interesting about him is that you see the same report over and over again that, you know, an executive from an unnamed team said, you know, uh, Budenholzer refuses to adjust throughout the playoffs. Yeah. He's very one track minded and, you know, we're going to play this way and we're it not going to divert from it. Well, I mean, we're not the, gonna a, gr- a, a great counter argument to that is look at a coach who did change every single round of the playoffs and that coach won a title. Frank Vogel. Yeah. And great he coach. Com- he phased out his bigs completely in an yep. entire series. Yep. And they had never played that the way the play. entire season. Not one time. And that's, but, that's uh, called great coaching in the playoffs, knowing what you have to do to win the game. You have to have that's the willingness to, to change. Can do. Yeah. 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 He's shown time and time again that he's not willing to, nope, to change the style of play. He's, he sees the, the regular season success that comes from mm-hmm. their style of play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it works in the regular season to get them to yeah. the spot that they're at. You yep. know, gets them to a one seed. They look unstoppable, different. but the playoffs are a whole nother animal. Yep. And um, yeah, I it, think it's, it's like, it's like how I said earlier in the last podcast, like when you're playing a team three, four, five times in a row, you figure out how to beat them in a different way than you would normally play. That's right. why with, with this season coming up, if they wind up doing, you know, series like they do in baseball, where you play one team three times, a team that has a coach that's willing to adjust play style, like Frank Vogel, right? Those teams are going to win more games because they're going to be able to adjust as they play these teams through three or four game series. Unlike a coach like Budenholzer, who's not going to adjust and the other team will adjust to him, they'll be able to beat him. So I actually, I bet you the Bucks will regress this year and actually become a three or four seed. That's my hot take. Another interesting dynamic in that is the fact that, you know, you have to kind of set a culture where the players are willing to sacrifice when necessary because you see yes. JaVale McGee starting center for, you know, 90% of the year. Oh, yeah. Not a single minute in an entire series, except, you yeah. know, aside from game one. Yeah. And you see a guy like Dwight Howard, uh, a future Hall of Famer, first ballot Hall of Famer. Yep. And had a resurging year, and he just you – know, Willing to accept his role and do what the team needed. When and his number was called upon, he played. Yes. Yeah. And that starts and with, I, you know, setting a culture. And that's why I think that this is, this is getting a little bit side point. You know, people dogging the fact that we have Jared Dudley on our team. I think you need a guy like Jared Dudley on your team. That's yes. important. You yeah, need face guys value. Like that. Yeah, at face value. You see, he's a guy not there like to play. Like, he's he. You know, he looks like a guy you pick up at a, at a in a rec league. But like he's not there. He, <laughs> he's not there. To, <laughs> he's not there to contribute in big minutes. You know, and and uh, and give you a time. Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd. Elmer Fudd. I was gonna say Elmer Fudd. I was Elmer gonna Fudd. Him, it's yeah. Elmer Fudd. It's the same shit. It's Wabbit season, but um, it's Wabbit season. I'm hunting wabbits. <laughs> But, you know, you, you need a guy like that to kind of set the tone. No, I agree. And, I agree. And communicate. Even a guy like Giannis, he's a generational talent. I love watching him play. He plays with, you know, great intensity and uh, he's very competitive. But 
you saw him at times he was he seemed like he kind of you know shied away from the from taking the moments because he can't shoot well not even that just you know oh he didn't want to guard jimmy he didn't want to guard jimmy but you see guys like lebron ad any anyone who kind of has like that 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 i don't want to say killer instinct but yeah they just have that willingness to kind of step outside of their comfort zone and really I, embrace the and moment. And all see, that. I love Giannis as a dude. I think he's like like a really cool dude, right? You can just tell based off somebody's like how they carry themselves. He just seems like a really down to earth human being, right? Right. Um, I just think he's really overrated. Like I love him as a player. I just think he's really overrated. That's one of my takes. You remember that take? I remember your top ten overrated list, and I yeah, he's on there. I have so much on. <laughs> I know. It's it, they're hot yeah. takes, dude. They're honestly hot. no. I, I I would I would agree with the fact that Giannis is overrated in the sense that he's not he's not the best like player in the league. The NBA, yeah, the NBA is trying to kind of they're trying to force this kind of rebranding of the NBA as you know this is Giannis's league and or you know, Zion's when, league. Yeah, I well, more, I got more thoughts about Zion too. Zion's a whole different thing. We can get to that in another episode. That I, okay, you know, on the Camcast, but uh, this I feel like. Um, the NBA is trying to force this uh, um, this narrative that they're that Giannis yeah. is taking over and LeBron's he's on his way he's out. taken over he, you know back to back MVPs he won NBA uh, Defensive Player of the Year and MVP no, this I agree. year I agree and it's it's just it's weird to see because it never pans out all the way through the end of the season for the Bucks that you know Giannis is through and through the best player on the court at all times yeah no, I agree I'm not trying yeah. to be you know a LeBron exceptionalist here but. LeBron shows year after year that he is, you know, the best player. He's still he's still on the throne. throne. Yeah, he's still yeah. on the throne. And um, that's that's my problem with the Bucks is that they hit, they don't seem to have a culture that is rooted in, you know, we're gonna do whatever we need to do to win. And I'm hoping that you know that Drew brings a different kind of uh, feel to the Bucks that you I know, think he will. can. Yeah, but it do, it does start up at the top. I mean, like look at the Lakers. I mean, you know, bless Jeannie Buss and Rob Polinka. They're just yeah. They're amazing human beings. You know, Rob Polinka, the fact, I, you, I hope you heard my rant when Rob Polinka was voted number seven for the GM award winning, the executive year. Horrible, right? He's, he's seen, terrible. Look, look what he's doing so far. We're, we'll get into that in a little bit. Actually, you know what? We're, we're done with the Giannis part of the podcast. Let's get going back onto the trades. But anyways, yes. got to give praise to Jeannie Buss and Rob Polinka. So the next trade in the, in the guise of the Lakers, Robert or uh, Rob Polinka was able to trade Danny Green in a first round pick in a very weak ass draft and acquire Dennis Schroeder, who is just a dog. I love it. Dennis Schroeder is a, is a great point guard. He's a great scorer. He's a good shooter. The more important thing is he's going to annoy the shit out of the other team's point guards. That's yep. just what he's known for. You know, he he's always had that type of demeanor about him where he's just literally like a little pit bull and he's just going to annoy you and run and play hard the entire time. He's good at driving. He's good at, you know, kicking out to his teammates wide open, decent rebounder for a little fella. But and more importantly, he, we're finally going to have an established person either. I don't know if he's going to be starting or off the bench, regardless, he's getting in a lot of minutes of a guy who's just going to come in, get buckets and get his teammates involved. So it's like a, it's like an upgrade over Rondo for sure. So, yeah, I, I love the the trade overall for, for Schroeder. Um, the the values that they got him at in a weak draft they gave up the twentieth pick and the Lakers you know the last few years have been very uh very just very good at drafting um, oh yeah well look at THT last year they bought that pick he's gonna I'm be something. so excited for THT oh I'm THT's so gonna be something and Devonte Kaycock all the oh yeah they pick up Costas but yeah the Lakers are they're 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 very good at drafting yep um especially late in the in the draft um, yep. Shout out Jordan, find Clark. something. Jordan Clarkson just got paid yep. over fifty million for four years. Yep. Yep. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, at the the value they got him at with the Dan Green, who, you know, I like to cut him some slack because he was injured in the playoffs and he was a solid contributor throughout the year. Um, but he was owed fifteen million this year, uh, maybe a little bit more. I think maybe sixteen or something like that. Hey, and then yeah, I yeah, and being able to offload that contract and get a player that you basically that fulfills a need because you think you're going to lose Rondo, right? Yep. And then you also sign his backup to replace him in Wesley Matthews for $3 million. Yep. Which we all, which the Lakers also just did today. Yep. Um, that's, that's great. Huge. And the, the, the part I like about it is um, you, you offload a 15 to $16 million contract of a, a 33, 34 year old guy in Danny green. Mm-hmm. And you pick up 
a 27 year old point guard yeah. in the prime of his career. Yeah. You could potentially sign to a, a longer deal or, or yeah. Yeah, a couple more years. If the price is right. Season. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and then you offload a guy like Danny Green, who, you know, he's definitely at the tail end of his career. He doesn't have many years left in him. No. For a guy like Wesley Matthews, who's, you know, he's, he also might be on the back end of his career. He obviously had the Achilles tear. and Yep. But, I mean, last year he showed he's a very capable defender. He's a very Still capable shoots shooter. a good three. Yeah, still shoots a very good three ball. And you get him thir- 12, 13 million dollars less than Danny Green. Oh, yeah. It's a steal. For the same on, amount of time that Danny Green had On top of the other news that the Lakers had today, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but so next big trade that happened was actually Danny Green going from the Thunder to the to the Sixers, right? Yep. With Terrence Ferguson and the Thunder getting back in return. A first-round pick, which is what Sam Presti's doing. He just like Thanos with all of his, his first-round pick, Infinity Gems. Yep. Cashing in at certain times and, uh, uh, and a second-round pick. Um, I like the pick for the Sixers. You have to get rid of that Horford pick or that Horford ca- uh, contract. The, the contract was terrible. We knew it was bad when it happened last year. <clears throat> We're like, how is this going to work? It's a team that can't shoot, so what you do is you add more players that can't shoot. Well, here's why I think they did it. The, <laughs> the Sixers kryptonite for that, that two-year run was the, the Celtics. It was no secret. It was the Celtics. Yeah, so they got rid of Al Horford. They wanted to get rid of the guy who minimized a lot of their offensive capabilities. And, yep. again, that would be very much patched up if uh, Ben Simmons would shoot the goddamn basketball. But Because yeah, um, he can shoot. Yeah. I just don't know why he doesn't. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's, I think maybe it's a coaching thing, too, with Brett Brown. I wasn't a big fan of him. No, he's okay. a bad coach. Jimmy yeah. Butler had a lot of negative things to say about Brett. Brett. Yeah. Did you listen to him on JJ Reddick's podcast? I did. I, by the way, JJ Reddick's podcast is fantastic. It's a great podcast. It's that great... and All the Smoke are the two best NBA podcasts, in my opinion. Side tra- side note: Do you listen to uh, Knuckleheads? Uh, Knuckleheads is hold on. That's Quentin Richardson and Darius Miles, right? Yes. Yeah. Also fantastic. There, theirs is pretty good too. Also, fantastic. I really like. I really like All the Smoke because. I gain more respect from Matt Barnes and Steven Jackson because they're big Kobe heads. Like they worship at the coach of Kobe or the, oh, at yeah. the church of Kobe Bryant. Yeah. Right. So they have, they have nothing but good things to say about Kobe, but those two keep it real. And they're part of the, we believe, you know, golden state warriors Yeah. for all you warriors that became warriors fans within you know the Curry run. There was a team that was amazing. And I think what, 2007 that beat the, the one seed. They knocked Mavericks. down the, the knock, yeah, they knocked out the Mavericks. Which but, uh, that team was loaded. That team was absolutely loaded. And that, that Warriors team was equally loaded. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's a great podcast. If you're a big fan of the NBA, both the JJ Reddick podcast, the Up and Smoke podcast, and apparently Knuckleheads, which I'll give a listen to too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, <clears> I mean, <throat> uh, where are we at? Uh, we're talking about the – Ben Simmons uh, and, uh, yes. and the Sixers. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, the, the, the Horford contract was uh, – Definitely like a desperation move to try to you know, free. They them were trying to, the- yeah. They're they're trying to play chess. They're trying to take away this one of the Celtics' best assets, and basically, you know, Horford was kind of the the person that they ran their offense through. He had a yeah. lot more assists when he was on the Celtics. He was a better shooter. He was a good rebounder. He flinched every time there was a free throw, though, which is really weird. Very and, odd thing that I don't, happens. Yeah, to, I feel like he just got hit as a kid. Like all there's the time entire there's entire compilations of him just flinching at every free throw. It's really um, funny though. Like it's it's all canon now. It's super funny. Yeah, but uh, so I, I like that trade for the Thunder and Daryl Morey again is just I I don't have a lot of positive things to say about Daryl Morey, but he will get the team better. They will get better. I think he just fell victim to James Harden and okay. And, so what's your take Houston. on James Harden though? What's your take on James Harden? Obviously, an incredible talent scoring of wise. Of course, he yeah, uh, that's undisputable. I think he just had too much control in Houston. He was able to dictate. I don't know if it was him or Mike D'Antoni that was able to dictate how the offense was ran and that it just gave him complete reign over how things were done in Houston. A lot of it was just dribble, dribble, dribble. I'm going to, you know, pull off a step back from 30 feet back, which, you know, is incredibly hard to do. So all power to him because that's an insanely difficult shot to make. But um, is, is he on your list it, for the most annoying players to watch all time? Yes, he is. He's number one for me. I don't. Okay, I don't want to say I hate him because I uh, over, you know, since, and I hate to say it, but since the passing of Kobe, I've, I've tried to turn myself away from hating players and just. I respect that. M- being more just overall. Be, be, uh, yeah, that way you can detailed, just enjoy them while detailed they're here. In, Yeah, detailed, in, but detailed in the critique of them. I understand. And, uh, you know, obviously Harden has his faults where he just 
he loves to get his way to the free throw line by any means yeah. necessary. God damn, yeah. But uh, but yeah, he, I think he just had too much control over how Houston was ran, and um, it was to their own detriment because they yeah. Ended up sh- yeah, they they were just it wasn't a good situation for them overall. No, it wasn't. I agree, hundred percent agree. Um, I just his game is so frustrating to watch. Like it just it's nasty to watch. I hate it. Right. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, James Harden's a player that we should both like. He's from SoCal. He's from here. He's got an immense amount of talent. He's an amazing shooter. He's a hard. He plays hard when he wants to. Um, I just I I can't I can't be a fan of his. It's really really tough. I just hate his game so much. But uh. Anyways, that's another trade. Then the, the last trade I want to talk about for now is the Chris Paul to Phoenix trade. What do you think about that trade? I love it. Yeah, I know. I love it for for Devin Booker. Um, Devin Booker is one of my favorite young – not not even just young players, just one of my favorite players overall. He's so incredibly talented. He is an absolute killer. Yeah, he is. He, But he's been missing that kind of mentor – since he yeah. came into the league. He's, he's never had one. The the weirdest thing the Suns ever did was signing Tyson Chandler to impress LaMarcus Aldridge. Never is that what they sense. did? Yep. Yeah. I didn't, um, that is weird. <laughs> that is was, weird. Weirdest thing they ever did. Um, but, yeah, um, Devin Booker's been missing, you know, uh, uh, a seasoned veteran who knows how to play the game at a high level. Yeah. Kind of show them the ins and outs of you know how to navigate through the regular season, the playoffs, mm-hmm. and how to really tap into you know that missing. I don't. I wouldn't say missing part of his game, but that part of his game that he he doesn't have to create all of his own shots. He can kind of just now get a point guard that's going to be able to put it put him into position to get those shots. And also exactly. DeAndre Ayton too. DeAndre Ayton's about to be a monster again this year. He was great last year. I like Ayton a lot. I do too. I think he's got talent. He's got a very good. I think at this point now he has a very good balance of an inside outside game. He, yep. You could you saw him developing kind of a, an outside shot. Shot's um, not bad. It's not bad. Looking. Not bad at all. And he he kind of stepped it up uh, defensively. He wasn't a very good defender when he first came into the league, and mm-hmm. now you see him kind of taking himself more seriously. Yeah, I agree. Defensive end. He reminds me a little bit of Carl Anthony Towns, but I think that he plays harder than Carl Anthony Towns. He's more – yeah, I feel like he's more of like a brute force than him. Yeah, I agree. I, I'm just – I'm not a huge fan of Cat. I think that Cat yeah. doesn't put a lot of effort out there either. Yeah, Cat's a whole other discussion. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to get too much into that now. But, yeah, I, I see what you mean in the contrast of that. Um, he's uh, – yeah, I like Aiton a lot. I think having Chris Paul around him will be a, a – a, a, They're a playoff team for sure, right? Like, oh, like, absolutely. I think their ceiling is maybe like a four or five seed. I can see that. Minimum seven – Six I can see that. Um, yeah. They're going to get steamrolled by the Lakers still because they just don't have enough size. Great team. I mean, there's great there's talent, no one. There's just no one in the NBA that can, great team. Great. I think I, <laughs> I was saying that a lot during the podcast. I was like, yeah. hey, they're real good. They're great. Lakers in five. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just that's just what it was. But uh, nah, it's it's there's. I mean, I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to harp on more Anthony Davis stuff. But that guy's just impossible to guard. I mean, he's got literally all Nobody the tools. Nobody will ever be able to guard him. Yeah. You can't. You can't. You can't guard him. You know, he's in that class of KD where you can't guard KD either. You know, you can guard yeah. LeBron for a little bit because when LeBron's not shooting well, you just sag off him. But yeah. uh, but AD is impossible. Not is impossible to guard. Him. He shoots too well. So, but all right, we've talked about the trades that have happened. Um, there's probably a little bit more that have happened. What about potential trades? Do you see Westbrook getting traded? Okay, now I'm glad you brought this up because yeah. I have a blow it up Houston scenario. Let's do it. But blow it up by in this in the in the sense that they get rid of Russ and Harden. Yes. But remain relevant. Ooh. So okay. I'm gonna walk you Let's through both it. of these, starting with how they offload Harden. Okay. So which team is Harden going to? It's no secret that uh Ben Simmons in Philly has been an issue because he refuses to, to, to shoot. shoot. And again, I think that might have been a, a Brett Brown thing that yeah. uh, kind of you know carried I, over I, to him. And, and I've, I've been saying this forever: Joel Embiid, great player; Ben Simmons, great player. Together, they don't work because they don't spread the floor enough. They need the. They both need the paint to to be. They both their need most the effective. paint to be their most effective. Hundred percent correct. Um. So here's my the trade works. I checked it out. It works. <laughs> Um, trade machine. 
it was it was a it wasn't the ESPN trade machine. This one's more oh, detailed. It allows one? you to okay. allows you to enter picks and uh, trade oh, exceptions. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Um, but again, it's unlikely. All right. But this is my 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 ideal scenario for both the teams. So, Houston would receive Ben Simmons, Shake Milton, and Zaire Smith. Okay. And Philly would get James Harden and a first round pick in the twenty twenty two draft. Okay. Damn. I like this draft for both teams because the, one the the pick or the trade James Harden. The, I love the trade for both teams because James Harden would. I think he would do very well in Philly. He has a great uh, number two guy in Joel Embiid. Who could great pick and roll partner. He, amazing. Yeah. That would be so deadly. I don't I think Harden wants to go to Philly. I think he's, you know, hard set on, uh, on, on Brooklyn. Oh, I got thoughts about that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Thoughts on I'm that. sure you have plenty of that. <laughs> I got a lot of thoughts on that one. But uh, oh, yeah, I, I would like it for both. Yeah, um, especially because of how – the Russ trade I have in mind would pair with Ben Simmons. So okay. I'm going to leave it at that. So Ben Simmons, Shake Milton, Zaire Smith to Houston, Philly, James Harden, and, a, and three total picks. And, you know, that doesn't really matter. But um, the Russ trade that I have in mind, and I think this is more um, – more possible again. I don't think this exact trade will go down, but I think it's more. Is it to an Eastern likely. Conference team? It is. All right. Is it? Can I take a guess? Take a guess. Is it the Knicks? No. All right. So then it would have to be the Pistons. There you go. You got All it. Right. All right. So Detroit gets Russell Westbrook, mm-hmm. and Houston gets Blake Griffin, a 2021 first and a 2023 second. I like it. If both teams again, shed their contracts, yes, the the I if in some amazing world where whatever I say goes, Houston and Philly agree on a trade for Ben Simmons and Russ and uh, James Harden. So what's fun about then, that trade? What you, I don't know if you realize what you just did. You put Blake Griffin and Ben Simmons on the same team. Exactly, that was my whole they have, goal. They have shared girlfriends. I forgot about that. Shout out Kendall Jenner. Shared- <laughs> no, I think I think they shared girlfriends twice. I think they switched girlfriends, if I'm not mistaken. I, so I think it was Blake Griffin and, and Ben Simmons. They switched. Maybe it wasn't Blake Griffin. It might have been. Coos? I think they switched. I think it might have been that. But man, it, uh, man, that's interesting uh, dynamic in that whole trade. Uh, hmm. But aside, you know, it's pure. <laughs> I just thought that was funny. I was uh, it's strictly that, that basketball could, terms. That, that could be great uh, drama, and I'm here I, for that. <laughs> I'm here for the drama. In a basketball sense, though, I would love it because <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here for the celebrity talk cam. God damn I just it. thought it was funny, man. You got to keep it relevant for all audiences, man. On it, yeah, there's the human aspect to it. Um, mm-hmm. But, I mean, obviously Ben Simmons loves to operate more, you know, closely around the rim in the way the, the, the Rockets are constructed now. They're a, a very perimeter-oriented team, and Ben could easily just, you know, be their more dominant presence around the rim and in the paint. Um, you know, attacking the room and stuff like that. And Blake has, over the last two years, shown that he's more than capable of being a, a good outside shooter. Yeah, he's gotten better. And, Still got uh, a hitch in his jumper, but it goes in. Yeah, he's shooting in a much better clip than he did with the Clippers. He does. He does for sure. Um, and especially with the knee injuries over the last couple of years, I think he's trying to, to integrate his game more to the perimeter. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, I think that would work out for both teams. Uh, Philly gets a guy who can obviously shoot from range and would be a good pick and roll partner with Embiid, and Detroit would just get a a relevant star to kind of keep them kind of in the mix. I feel like wherever Russ goes, they're going to be talked about. They're going to be obviously he drew, he took that 2016 2017 OKC team to the playoffs, and they have Dwayne Casey, who's a great coach who just yep. needs some players. And now they have 32 centers that they could put around Russ. Uh, and yeah, let's talk about that right now. So the. The, the the Pistons today, they signed Mason Plumlee to three years, $25 million. They signed Jaleel Okafor to two years, and they signed – who's the other one? Uh, Jeremy Grant, three years. Jeremy Grant. And they, yeah, they gave Jeremy Grant $60 million over three years, which I thought he was going to be a Laker. I was hoping he was going to be a Laker, but, man, chase the money. If they're going to give you $20 million a year, chase the money, dude. You know? Well, here's the, here's the interesting thing about, uh, about Grant. He – his offer from 
Detroit because he was he went into restricted free agency. Yes, his offer was matched by uh, Denver. They were willing to pay him the sixty million over three years, and he really still took Detroit. Yeah, that's pretty weird on Denver's part. We were talking about uh, Russ and James getting traded out of o- out of uh, OKC out of Houston, and there are a lot of possibilities. Actually, one of the possibilities that I thought could happen is like a sign and trade because I heard that the Rockets were interested in Christian Wood. But it turns out they did do a sign and trade, but Westbrook wasn't involved for it with it. Uh, Christian Wood actually just went to the Pistons. I went from the Pistons to the Rockets, which right. I mean, I think he's he can be a good player. He was good towards the end of the year on a team that had nobody. Um, I think he might have gotten overpaid, but good for him for getting the money, you know. I I really like Christian Wood. Um initially I believe he signed for uh three years, twenty seven million with the Rockets. Um I didn't like that at first for, for Wood because I think he's worth more than $9 million a year. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I, I, had meant, I had said that he would probably be worth, be worth more in the 12 to $15 million a year range. And that, that deal was eventually renegotiated to, to three years, $41 million. Yeah. So right in the sweet spot. Um, you know, I'm, I'm happy for him. He's a very good player. He's a very, uh, he has a very uh, bright future. Um, obviously not like a highly touted uh, a pick you know, when he was, you know. He was undrafted. He was the undrafted yeah. out of uh, UNLV. He's from Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's a deep cut. I do, all my, I do all my research, man. I know where everyone's yeah. from. Oh, man. Everything's so, yeah, just uh, I'm messing up. Happy for him. Um, uh, good value for the Rockets. Yeah, I think uh, so. I think he'll uh, pan out to be a very, you know, very good player, one of the more better bigs in the league throughout the rest of his career. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, no complaints there for me. All right, man. Let's. Uh, we've talked about a lot of the stuff. A lot of you know. I mean, we we can mention that there was talk that maybe the Lakers were going to get DeRozan. There was talk that maybe Oladipo is going to get traded. It doesn't look like he's going to get traded now. Um, there was talk that maybe Levine was going to get traded. It looks like all those guys are going to stay put for the time being, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, sure. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I, what I want to talk about now is, I mean, let's get into the Lakers perspective a little bit. That'll be our last topic because, you know, we're both diehard Laker fans, bleeding the purple and gold. Um, Rob Polinka has been a madman this week. He's been moving some, he's been shuffling. On the fire. Deck. He's been shuffling the deck. Yeah. Um, so he, he made the shooter trade earlier in the week. Anthony Davis announced he's going to be signing with us. He's just evaluating, you know, what type of extension he's going to plan on getting. Um and then, that, you know, that'll, that'll last through Thanksgiving, his negotiations on the contract and the terms. Yeah, but he, of exactly. He'll be, but he's coming he'll be, back. He'll be a Laker next year. That's all that matters. Yeah, he's, he's, he's coming back next year. We, so we can run yeah. him back and go two for two. Um, we didn't sign back Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is signing with the 76ers. Uh, it's, a, it's a loss. You know, I was kind of bummed yeah. by that. He's, he's getting the veterans minimum. It was nice. I think I said in the last pod, I was really excited to have Dwight Howard back last year. It was really cool that he was able to redeem himself. I know Kobe somewhere just like, you know, just – I'll give him the slow clap. Even though Shaq's being a dick. Have you been following up with Shaq's been talking I about? have, and I don't – I mean – I don't understand the hate. Yeah. Sha- Shaq's always kind of been like that. I mean, I love Shaq. I always will. Of I, course. There's no way you can hate Shaq, but he's he always been kind of like – some, Yeah, and anyone who kind of threatens his, I guess, his – His legacy, his greatness. His, his stature, I guess. Yeah. yeah. You know, su- the whole Superman factor of Dwight and all that. Yeah, no. He's, ne- he's never been a big Dwight guy, but uh, – No. I mean, I kind of – I not. try to shrug it off as much as possible. Dwight's – obviously grown as a person and is shrugging it off. Oh, for sure, man. He's, he's, he's acting yeah. way more mature right now, which I really appreciate. He'll be missed by Lakers nation for sure. But I mean, they're always, he's always going to have that chip with us, you know? So it's a big deal. Um, oh yeah. Obviously. And he'll obviously he'll get a standing ovation anytime he comes by. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Stuff. He's not going to get booed anymore. Shout out Dwight. Um, yeah, yeah. Shout out Dwight. So obviously we know we signed Wesley Matthews, big deal. Um, but the biggest deal so far, which I didn't even hear anything about it. You guys, we signed Montrez. No Harrell. idea this was coming. To two years, $19 million, basically the vet's minimum. He's accepting the vet's minimum to come aboard the Lakers and play with us for two years. He's a Rich Paul client. Okay, so maybe that has something to do with it because apparently all Rich Paul clients go you know, to the Lakers. Um, man, I know I said many, many times last year that I would love to have a player on my team like Montrez Harrell. He all, all that dude does, he plays very hard, he's a good defender, he gets rebounds, and he gives you energy off the bench. I can't believe we got him. You can just pretty much seal that championship right now. There's, imagine this. You have your starting lineup is, you know, say it's uh, Dennis Schroeder, LeBron, Anthony Davis, you know, Wesley Matthews is probably – there's a good chance he's going to start. And then uh, as maybe of now, JaVale. JaVale. Yeah. Maybe JaVale as of now. Off the bench, you got Kuz, Alex Caruso, 
you have, you know, Montrez Harrell now. You have THT is going to be getting a lot more run this year. What if Avery Bradley decides to come back, he'll be back. I mean, we're – I'm not even talking about KCP, who's definitely yeah. going to come back. I mean, we're going to sign him. I hope he's not trying to get a bunch of money because um, we gave him a lot in his initial contract. Remember, I think our first contract we gave him was one year 20 mil, which was crazy. Might have been. I think it might have been less. Uh, it was. It was a lot. I don't remember the, the exact terms of it. Um, but I mean, we're stacked. So I, I, the as the roster stands right now, before the 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 Montrez signing, we have LeBron. Yep. We have Caruso, a, a young guy who I have a lot of uh, future. Taylor Horton in, Tucker. Taylor Horton Tucker, and another guy who, no matter where he goes, I think will be good. Devonte Kaycock. Dude, I agree. He, Devontae Kaycock is kind of like Montrezl Harrell. He's a menace. He's a menace. Dante, Devontae the Kaycock is underrated, man. Yes. He plays very, very well. I can't wait to, yeah. to, for him to get some NBA minutes. Yeah, exactly. Neither can I. I mean, he's going to be very good no matter where he's at. Four, four-year starter out of UNC Greensboro. He's a North Carolina boy. And then we got Kuz. JaVale yeah. opted into his player option. Um, so, you I mean, you're going to eat that up regardless. You know, everybody yep. figured he would do that. He's not going to get much money elsewhere. Um, yep. We got a uh, Dennis Schroeder, and then another young guy who oh, yeah, uh, Schreuder, yeah. also has NBA ties. Uh, in terms of the the most recent MVP is Costas Antetokounmpo. Oh yeah, Costas. Did you know that Wesley Matthews' dad was actually part of the Showtime Lakers? I did not know that until today, and I saw some stuff on it. Yeah. And that's pretty amazing. Yeah, it's funny because I I go through Basketball Reference all the time to look at stats because I like to. I mean, you know this about me. I'm a stat junkie. Like, oh yeah. I just, I'm I'm looking at stats all the time. Like, I'm always making sure I'm up to date on. On, on who scored what this year, what you know, what they were doing. That I like to know. I like to know as much as, as much as I can possibly know. I always tell my friends like, um, I know more useless shit than any one person should <laughs> ever know in their entire life. Things that actually matter, like you know, human connections. I don't know any but anything about that. But you give me, I'll tell you anything from standings to stats and sports and and talk about movies and who was in that movie every day of the week. For whatever reason, the stuff that doesn't matter, I'm really good at. So I look at stats all the time. So I was happy. I was looking at eighties Lakers stats two days ago for whatever reason. And I, I came across the roster. That's, that's where my brain goes sometimes. So I was going across the roster. I was like, Wes Matthews. Huh? And then, you know, today we sign him. So it's, it's, maybe it's just one of those things. Maybe I'm like, you know, secreting it into existence with my crystal ball, but uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty cool, man. It's, it's, I like the team that we're constructing. I'm really excited for, for the season to come. And what do you care? This this will be kind of like the last topic. What do you think about Kuzma? What's your opinion? So, do we trade him? Do we extend him? And if we extend him, how much? My my general opinion of Kuzma is I like the guy. He's uh, he gets it right. Well, he, he's an inch. You can't talk about Kyle Kuzma without giving a lot of nuance because he's had a very interesting path in the NBA. Yeah, his rookie year obviously broke out onto the scene. He was a a, a late first round pick. Um. You know, out of Utah, he wasn't. He uh, absolutely he wasn't talked about much. Uh, broke through in the in the summer league, got summer league MVP uh, in the final in the you know the summer league finals. Um, but you know, he's, he's a pure scorer, and he shows that like he can score at multiple levels. He gets hot super fast. When he gets hot, you're not stopping him. You're not stopping him. Um, but he kind of hit an interesting interesting uh, dilemma in his second year when LeBron came aboard because. You know, in his first year, he worked his way into the starting lineup, and you know was a, a key contributor for that year for that yeah, team. And he, and he took and he took Julius Randle out of starting lineup. Shout out to Julius Randle, who still has me blocked on Instagram from three four years ago. <laughs> Just because I, 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 I I messaged him, I told him he was trash and he's a bitch, and then he he blocked me. So I just <laughs> shout out to Julius Randle on that one. I just I wanted to. I think that one's funny. We speak with a we 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 operate with a lot of uh, objectivity here at uh, Camcast. Yes, <laughs> There's, it's it's objectivity from the eyes of a, of a 27 year old uh, sports wannabe. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, his second year, LeBron came aboard. He was kind of in that the awkward spot of is he a, is he a starting stretch four? Yeah. Is he a sixth man? And uh, I mean, he kind of worked through that and and made it work. He had a little bit yep. of a dip in his numbers that year, but um. It was still pretty on par with where he was the year prior yep. uh, in, in his rookie year. And then this year, again, you had a guy like Anthony Davis who I know. takes even more shots anywhere from He can be from anywhere from a stretch four to a starting five in the NBA. And uh, Kuz is, again, put in a position to where, you know, 
they signed Danny Green and, you know, they have KCP and all these other seasoned vets who are proven in the NBA who, you know, you don't really know where he belongs on the team and he kind of has to navigate his way. And I think he kind of found his niche with that specific roster as a guy who can score when you absolutely need him to. Yep. But someone who's going to absolutely lock in on defense. I he love what he's become as a defender. He got way better on defense in the bubble. I love what he's become as a defender. I agree. He moves his feet better. He played. He played great defense in the. Uh, I'm about to sneeze. It's about to come out. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless nope. you, bless you. I, I hit it away. Uh, so, uh, he had some great defensive assignments in the playoffs. He played Russell yeah. Westbrook pretty good on defense in the bubble. Not during the regular season, but in the bubble, he played Westbrook pretty well. He was sagging yeah. off him because Westbrook can't shoot. Uh, <laughs> We're not going to go down will, this again. I will continue with it, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, nah, it's he's. I really like Kyle Kuzma. I think he's a good dude. You can tell he's a good dude. I think yeah. first of all, you always want to root for good guys, right? And he comes from Flint. He comes from a tough area. He's worked really hard for everything that he has. Uh, his story is. I mean, he's from Flint. Uh, from Flint. He had. To, Flint? He went to yeah. from from Flint. Yeah. I, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. He had to. Uh, he was at a prep school in Utah because he was getting really no, no looks. So he moved to Utah to get more exposure. And the yeah. only college that was giving him a look was, was Utah university. So that's why he went there. And I think right. he registered his freshman year and then he wound up, you know, becoming the player that he is. But even in college, he wasn't seen as like an NBA prospect. What happened was in the, uh, uh, in the NBA, in the NBA combine, he really showed, showed out. I think he hit like seven threes in one of those games where they play each other in the NBA combine. I remember it was on TV and I was like, man, this kid's cash, you know, like he just mm-hmm. like came in, just made like five straight threes. And then, you know, the Lakers drafted him with the Nets pick that they took from the Nets and he completely he's overwhelmed, you know, he's been completely right. overwhelming and everything that he's been able to do. I mean, you don't ever expect anyone in the 28 pick to be able to be a solid contributor for you. And he has been. And that's a draft with two, you know, steals. Him and Donovan Mitchell, who's another steal, who I'm really high on. Shout out to my brother. Your team drafted I, I was going to say, and, Trey Lyles. And Tra- yeah. <laughs> God. Dylan. Um, poor Dylan. Poor Dylan. I guess I've made some questionable decisions. I, know. Uh, I, I hope them continued success, but God damn it. Trey Lyles. Oh, for, for, oh, for those that don't know on CamCast, Ethan is my brother's best friend, so that's why we keep shouting out my brother. So. I'm his best friend. I have many more best friends than him. Mm-hmm. No, I'm just kidding. No. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Love you, Dylan. My brother for life. Up. I was fucked up. I was fucked up. But uh, <laughs> nah, I, I like Kuz. I, I would be upset if we traded him, but I know that if we traded him, Rob would have a good reason for trading him. At this point, right. it's in Rob we trust, right? We're never going to go through a dark patch like we did the last 10 years because Rob's not going to let us ha- let that happen again. He's just not. I think Rob's too smart of a guy. Um, I was listening to ESPN radio actually uh, yesterday and Rob Palenka was on with John Ireland and, and Steve Mason on that, on that, their noon, their noon, uh, on the, the station's noon uh, uh, channel. Uh, and basically Rob said he had a conversation with Kobe right at the beginning of his job as a GM for the Lakers. And Kobe said, you know, I think you're going to, you know, the roster is pretty rough. I give you three years, three years. And yep. Ha- All and, right. I, and it, ha- and it happened in three years. Thing. Yep. And it happened in three years. That's, yep. that's Kobe, man. Kobe just knows everything. He, he knew everything. You know, R.I.P. Mamba. R.I.P. Mamba, man. R.I.P. R.I.P. Mamba. But, uh, no, nah, I'm excited for as, as more as more news breaks. We'll be talk, I'll talk about it probably on the next episode of the, of the podcast. But um, as of now, we kind of hit all the major things that have gone on. Uh, any last things you want to touch on before we sign off? Well, just to, going circling back to the Lakers, I have a few few thoughts on Sure on things they can and should do. Um, key players to resign. Obviously, Anthony Davis is the top priority. He, he'll, he'll be back. It's just a matter of structuring the contract. And, you know, uh, the pandemic year and all that is is a big factor in, you know, the payday that he's going to receive. And of course. I think he'll either sign to a one plus one or two plus one kind of deal to where he can position himself to get more money um, okay. in the short term. But I really, really, really want us to get KCP back. I, I said um, I said on one of the podcasts I will never yeah. slander KCP ever again. Yeah, he, he uh, single handedly carried us through some of those finals games. <laughs> he was you such know? an easy target in his Dude. first year, in his uh, with his uh, his house arrest issue. Uh, well, not only that, I had a problem with the way he used to play. Every time he would roll off a screen and get the ball, the ball would go up. And go they were up. bad shots. There are a few, there are a few ISO plays he had that uh, <laughs> he would just 
he would kind of wave off a screen coming and I know, go one on one and air ball at three or and something. He's not. Like that. He's not that guy. No. He's a great slasher. He. I said it before. He's an underrated athlete. He is he so is fast, so and bouncy. fast, and he can jump out the gym. He. He and might be like the fastest player on the court. They don't yeah. realize that he is so yeah. athletic. He might be the fastest player on the Lakers, and that includes LeBron. Just a little side here. There was a play this year against Houston in Houston where I think LeBron was on a break and KCP just ran the break just ahead of everybody. And he just – LeBron threw a a, throw, uh, a breakaway pass to him and he just dunked it and got fouled. But he is – he moves so He's fast. so fast. Like, on He's that quick break, and I realized, oh, my God, this guy is yeah. as fast as they come and can jump out the gym for a guy like – a guy and he, his size. and he and he's and he's so thin and so you know he his he has no, almost no muscle mass he's not a really big dude yeah he is so but he's like he's wiry strong right but right. he is so like fast you don't expect him to be that quick but man is he quick you know it's it's crazy yeah um so yeah I would love to see him back in the purple yes. and gold I would love that um another guy who you know might not be a big uh, a big name in free agency but I think the Lakers could use again is Markeith Morse. I like Markeith. Markeith was, he was a, a trade deadline acquisition through a buyout. He was bought out by the Pistons, um, was shooting 40% at the trade deadline and the Lakers were able to get him on a, a you know, a minimum contract for the yep. rest of the year. But he was a huge deal for the Lakers in he was. the sense that, you know, in the, the Portland series, he had. He allowed us to play more small ball too, dude. You know, when you have a guy like that, that's strong. He, he's he able to play small ball five. He unlocked so many possibilities for the Lakers yeah. with that with that specific roster with with yep. Javale and Dwight, who would yep. get heavy minutes throughout the year. If we didn't and have Marquis, we wouldn't have been play, able to play small ball that often. Exactly, in a, a series against uh, against Houston, you know, he was able to kind of play uh, the reserve five slash four guy, and he was able to to move AD to the five when he came in off the bench. Yep. yep. He was, uh, you know, and with great range, he was a good yep. shooter from the outside. Great shooter. Better shooter than Marcus, I think. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I think Marcus, Marcus is the better player, but Mar- yeah, Marcus signed again. He re-signed with the Clippers for a big, big contract. Well, I think it was four years, 64, 64 million. million. Yeah. They, he got way more money than Montrez Harold. And that's how I know the Clippers aren't going to win again next year. <laughs> I have so many. We'd have to do a whole separate podcast on the Clippers. <laughs> we are. Oh, I, I'm here for it. I love to hate the Clippers. <laughs> I love it. I love to hate they, the fact that they, they, they fired Doc Rivers because they were worried about the culture. So what they did was they hired their assistant coach under the same regime. Well, here's my favorite part about that. And it's Doc, Rivers, Doc Rivers talked himself out of a job by talking up Sam Castell and Lou Will. And, uh, yeah, uh, what an idiot. Doc Rivers, Kate, okay, what's your take on Doc Rivers? I think he's one of the most overrated coaches in NBA history. Okay. At, at the foundation of it, he's a he's a good a decent NBA coach, but he's yes. definitely overrated. Yes, he got lucky with one Celtics team that had yep. a prime KG, talent. prime A. Ray Allen, prime Paul Pierce, and a and a rookie Rondo. Yes, and the talented squad. He's shown a few times that he is not capable of closing out series and adjusting yep. properly. Yep. Starting with the Magic. Yep, the head team Mac. Bad T Mac and Drew T-Mac. Gooden, they were yes. stacked back in the in the uh, the early two thousands. That was a great team. Yes, and uh, I mean, yeah, he's <laughs> he's known for having uh, <laughs> he's known for having uh, chemistry issues in his locker rooms. Yeah, so he goes because he because he prioritizes the star players. But he, then he goes and gets hired by a team that's known for having locker room <laughs> chemistry issues. issues in the locker room. I know. It's so I, I know fascinating. It, there, fascinating. There's a lot of issues with that. You, you would want him on a team that's young, that's trying to grow, that doesn't have a star. I think he could flourish there. He'd be a great. Give them some guidance. I think so I too. Mean, I th- you saw you saw him with the Clippers year prior to last. With, oh, they were know, good. You know they had Gallo. They had yeah, Montrez who was starring in his role. They had Lou Will who yeah. was running everything. In a team like that was that, a good he team. Was. That was a fun team to watch. Rebuilding coach, but I don't think he's able to manage the kind of star I agree. talent and the egos that come along with it. But I agree, I, mean, I agree. Yeah. Um, now, real quick, circling back to the Lakers. Sure. There are a few guys who I had jotted down who are unlikely to return, but I would like to come back. One I can cross off immediately is Dwight Howard. Obviously, he's going. He's going to Philly, yep. and I can't be mad at him for that. He came to the Lakers. He proved that he's willing to change. Uh, 
you know, how he approaches the game. And yep. You know, I'll, I'll it's not going to work for him in that. Philly, though. I just hope he knows that. I, I hope I hope it does, though. Because well, I have... it, I, the reason why I don't think it's going to work is one, it's Daryl Morey's team now. They're going to shoot a lot more threes. And Doc Rivers. I think he's going to. I think he's going to play a lot less. Uh-huh. I'm talking like maybe 10, 12 minutes a game, maybe even less I mean, than that. A lot of uh, a lot of coaches' decision DMPs, but I mean he's getting paid, so you got to yeah. give it to. You. He's yeah. a. Hall, I will not take the slander. He's not a Hall of Famer. Dwight Howard is a Hall of Famer. He was before he first won ballot. the championship. First ballot. First ballot. First ballot. First one ballot. of the greatest defenders ever. One of the greatest rebounders ever. I'm glad we're on the same page as that. Uh, yeah, no, for that. Dwight yeah. Howard is a first ballot Hall of Famer, 100%. So, yeah, we're not getting Dwight back. Uh, it's sad to see him go. I'm happy for him, though. I'll forever yes. have love for Dwight. He came yes. back, redeemed himself, had a great yeah. redemption year, all that. I know. Laker fans uh, love him now. Another one, Rajon Rondo, he's not coming back. I think that he's was, going to the Hawks. I remember, yeah, you did mention to me that. Uh, yeah, I think he's going to that Hawks. to me before the pod. That uh, I think for them it makes sense. They need somebody to be the elder spokesman of that team. Vince Carter's no longer there, right? And they're a team that wants to get into the playoffs with a young point guard who you're a fan of, who I'm not a fan of, uh, <laughs> who needs some guidance. <laughs> I think he'll be great for Trey. I think he will. Uh, no, he'll be no, he'll be great for Trey. I think if, I mean, if he gets a year under with with Rondo, I think that'll improve Trey's game. I mean, Trey on his own is already – he's a fantastic player. He's – he he was – and that's all for here on CamCast. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> you can't deny that Trey's a fantastic player. He obviously was a starting I, I, uh, a starting all-star this year in the East. But I think he's been, he's been, he's been missing that veteran presence. He has, um, just like Devin Booker. Yeah. He, he hasn't had that kind of guidance to – you know, there, there's a certain – I guess like savvy and wisdom that come with the game. Yes. And Trey kind of possesses that, that savvy a little bit because he's very confident in himself, but you know, there's still that you need that, that kind of presence to kind of navigate you through the ins and outs of the league and stuff like that. And I think if Rondo does eventually end up going there, it'll be good for him. And, you know, now that we're speaking about, it, I hope he does go there just for the, you know, I think, so I think that'd be good for Rondo. Yeah. Well, as long as Rondo doesn't <laughs> go to the Clippers, I don't care. I don't think he will. I don't, I don't think, think he will really either. I don't think I don't think Rondo's built like that. I think he's gonna um, chase the bag. Another, yeah, he probably will. And I mean, after this postseason, he definitely will get paid. Yeah, I, get paid. I think he has several suitors, and you know, good for him. He deserves yep, it. No, after, I agree. After like I agree. That. He played great for us. You know, hats off to you. As I take my hat off unintentionally, but yeah. um, another guy I would like to see back in the Laker uniform that I I'm not sure if it's likely is just Jared Dudley. Duds. No, he's coming back. They're they're in discussions. Okay, as a, that's good. As a vet minimum again. I need him back. I think he's I, important for the culture. He's very he's very valuable to whatever team he's on. Have you heard him speak? He goes. I have. He's hard he's not be, to like. He's going to be a good coach. He's hard, he's or or an analyst. He's hard not to like. He's coach, like all like analyst, you know, he's GM, all energy. He'll be good wherever he ends up. Yeah, he he's a sm- you can tell he's a really intelligent dude. It's hard not to like Jared Dudley. You and know, I mean, yeah. That that doesn't take much explanation, but another guy who I hope comes back and I know you're kind of you were kind of uh, on the fritz about it because of uh, his his wanting to get paid is Avery Bradley. Yeah, I would love to have Avery Bradley back. I just know that if he leaves, he's going to be hated by Lakers fans for life. I don't think that's going to be the case. Um, you don't think? Do you know? Do you know Laker fans? I am one. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> breaking news on Camcast: Ethan is a. <laughs> Breaking news from Woj, um, Woj but uh, but no, I think Avery Bradley they kind of they kind of took a roll roll of the dice on him this year. He he was on the he the year prior he was, he was for on a while. the Clippers. Yeah, he wasn't he very good season. on the Clippers. Uh, ended up on the Pistons. The Pistons uh, ended up on the Grizzlies. Grizzlies. Yeah, Grizzlies, and um, he had a good showing when he was there, and I, I kind of had a refound faith in him. When, once I saw him on the Grizzlies, but he's always been a very tenacious defender. Coming into yep. the year this year, he lost about, I think it was 40 pounds to, to get into shape for the Lakers. Oh, wow. And um, How big was he then? Jesus. Yeah, I mean, it didn't really show. I guess it kind of showed in his play as opposed to his body wow. type. But um, one thing that was very – that stood out to me a lot at the beginning of the year coming into this, this previous year with the Lakers was a lot of the, the defensive tone was set by Avery Bradley. It was, you know, you you saw a lot of guys saying, you know, they were doing the the Avery challenge, the Avery Bradley yep. challenge, and 
he, he picking up really picking up defense full court. I mean, he had, full he had court. a big impression on Alex Caruso for sure. Who for you sure. and I are big fans of. I love Caruso. He's everything you want a teammate to be. I want him to be a Laker for life. But for life. Yeah. I think I think that's going to happen. I don't. I. I mean, he's going to get paid after his contract ends next year. Somebody's yeah. going to offer him a bunch of money, and deservedly so. Oh, if yeah. he wants to chase the bag, chase the bag, Alex. Do you deserve thing. it. Fly you deserve free. It. Yeah, but fly I mean, free. I, 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 fly free, I would Bob love Eagle. to see fly free. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I would love to see Avery Bradley back with the Lakers. Uh, Me too. I, I agree. I, I, whether I, I've always liked Avery Bradley's game. Whether whether or not he's off the bench or you know in a starting role. Um, he would be valuable. You know, yeah, that's no, just, I agree. And uh, I don't know where his where his his mindset is at. You know, value wise, if I, I think he's searching for somewhere between you know six to eight million dollars a year. Um, maybe on a multi year deal. Maybe you know take it year by year after that. But uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I, I would like to see him. And then an underrated. I I, I know you're probably against this, and I'm not gonna. <laughs> I'm not going to count on you to agree with this at all. We'll One guy, see. you know, J.R. Smith is uh, – I'm just kidding. No, J.R. Smith is going to do whatever he does. <laughs> the Henny God. <laughs> um, that dude was so quick to take off his shirt when the Lakers won the title. That's what I still couldn't believe. And I appreciate that about him. He just, he's on brand. You know, he, he doesn't give a shit. Yeah, His he, IG yeah. Live is legendary. That was amazing. Also, yeah. um, Quinn Cook, I'm sad that the Lakers cut him, but I, I saw it coming. But like, okay, I feel like I could beat Quinn Cook one on one. I feel like you could beat Quinn Cook one on one. Hold on, Quinn Cook had the greatest <laughs> championship moment ever in Lakers history. Wait, what was it? I when, missed it. <laughs> I missed I think it. J, I think J.R. Smith was on uh, Instagram Live. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he said, <laughs> "Come back, make a U turn." I just want a fucking they, ring, and now I got to walk back to the hotel. <laughs> they left him at the. I know they left him. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's that just tells you everything you need to know about Quinn Cook, how much he put forward in his effort in the in the finals. <laughs> they forgot about his ass. Quinn My question Cook, is, where I was he? Remember. I did not know the team was leaving. Everybody was, was drunk. Come on, he's drunk. Everybody's drunk. drunk. Yeah, they're, especially they're all drink. They didn't drink no water. They're all sweating. They were but, they were drunk. I love Quinn Cook for the sole purpose that he's a lifelong Laker fan. His lifelong dad, Laker rest fan. In peace. Yeah, lifelong, lifelong loves Laker Kobe. Fan. Loves Kobe. Um, yeah. I was at the game where the uh, the Lakers first returned from after the death of uh, of Kobe, and uh, I was watching him in the warmups, you know, rapping along to Kobe Bryant by Lil Wayne, and uh, you know, he'll, he'll I think he'll be beloved by Laker fans, you know, for a long time, and just, he will. just he, for that he connection alone. Yeah, we it's anybody any I, I've learned that as a Laker fan and a, you know observing Laker fans, anybody that fucks with Kobe, you're cool with us, regardless exactly. of who you are. That's just right. you know, the Lakers are always going to be Kobe's team, regardless of all the great players that have come before, especially now that what's happened. Right. We are, I, I will always, you know, I'll, I'll even say it. I will put myself as being a Kobe fan before being a Lakers fan. Kobe influenced so much of my life, so much of my love for basketball. I know he did the same for you. And it, yeah. it's everything, everything on my podcast always goes back to Kobe because, you know, it, he would want all of us to keep doing better for ourselves. And that's why I started the podcast in the first place. I didn't right. want to live with any regrets is to be able to, you know, and, and not, and not do something that I know that Kobe would have done. He would have not, there's no stone left unturned in the Kobe Bryant world. Exactly. So it's, it's, you know, it was great that they were able to win the championship this year in, you know, in remembrance of Kobe and Gianna Bryant and everybody else that died on board. And I'm just looking forward to back to back brother. Cause you know, we're going to win it this year too. It's going to happen. There's a few, you know, obviously there's some things to iron out on the roster, you know, to get to that point, but I think they're on the right track. Yep. But I think the odds are in our favor. I know. I agree. And you know what? We're going to end it on that because I think that we are going to win it. We've talked a lot about everything else. Um, Ethan, once again, I want to thank you for coming on with me today. This is a lot of fun. I love, you know, we, we, we've been talking trades, NBA free agency, the draft for years. So it's cool to actually get this shit documented for once where it's going to live on on the internet for a little bit. Uh, you know, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, you got any last words for me? Well, I mean, I, d- I appreciate the opportunity to come on here. This is my first ever appearance on a podcast. I've, I've kind of wanted to dabble in the, uh, the, the kind of opportunity to, to speak with somebody and, and uh, kind of get my thoughts out there on the air, whether or not it's, you know, it's a, a grand audience or, you know, just a short, uh, close knit community. But uh, I mean, it's, it's been fun. And uh, yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I'm a Laker fan before anything else. So 
I think we're in good shape and I'm excited for the season. And overall, it's going to be a, an exciting NBA season regardless of what happens. I agree. So, it's going to be fun. It's definitely uh, going to be fun. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, you're, you're welcome. Yeah, Anytime sure. you want to come on, talk for about sure. some things that are going on in the NBA, talking about anything else, you're more than welcome to come on. We can get that sit, uh, situated for sure. But, uh, you know, I want to thank everybody else that's been listening at home uh, for listening to this episode of the, of the, uh, the CamCast. And as usual, if you can follow on any on the uh, on Instagram at cam.cast, that's where I've been posting a lot of, you know, the info about when new episodes are coming out. I've been posting a lot of memes lately because I've been getting bored. I've been wanting to keep it a little bit fresh on there. I post polls. Um, if you want to go ahead and follow on Spotify, follow on uh, Apple Podcasts at CamCast. And of course, right now on the YouTube, which you'll be able to see this full interview on uh, on YouTube, it's CamCast. And, you know, I have I think I have like seven or eight videos up there now of, of, uh, of there's a couple of, you know, with there's one with Ethan now could be one with my friend Travis and there's a bunch of me of my ugly face. So there, there's a lot on there, a lot of things happening. Uh, and as always, you guys, uh, you know, thanks for following. Thanks for listening. Peace and love. Thanks.